Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Bronze to GM. We are going to be doing a lovely build order, and we're going to show you guys an example of the build order executed quite well to show you what it's about to start off the show. Then we're going to go back and talk about all of the different mechanics, all of the beautiful little details. So I'm going to play a little bit faster in this game. We're going to try and show you a relatively smooth version of the build. And then we're going to go back. I'm not going to play crazy fast, but compared to like, we're going to go back after this and show you guys really painstakingly all the details. So this is going to give you an idea of the build order. You can get kind of the broad strokes. We're then going to walk you guys through how to set up your hotkeys, your mechanics, all those details, and then go back painstakingly, slowly, showing you what it's really like figuring out how all the buttons click. So first things first, guys, we want to go for a barracks on 16 and then a gas right after that on 16. And then we want to send, uh, we want to queue up some more SCVs. And you want to send an SCV across the map to scout after that, okay? So we're going to just tell this SCV to queue around their base and then hide behind their natural expansion so we can use that to scout later. And guys, there's a probe in my base. So if there's ever a probe in your base, always just attack that with an SCV so to make sure it doesn't cause you any trouble. And as your gas finishes, grab two workers and chuck those on gas. So we told this SCV to attack him. There we go. Just make sure he's actually attacking him. The reason we do this with Protoss is because obviously they are the cannon rush wow. race and in general you can just do this against anyone that sends a worker into your base at the start until you've got the barracks finished and that sort of stuff. Now here at 19 supply we stop building SCVs because the barracks is done. We go orbital command sensor and a reactor on the barracks and this SCV that built the barracks can come down here. But wait a second, there's already an SCV down there. So that one can I guess just go back to mining and then this SCV we can use to build that command center. Delicious. I'm going to queue that back to mining, add the command center to our control group. And next up, we want to build a depot. When you go reactor first, you got to get that supply depot. Command of course, we don't want to be walled upgraded. into our base. So we're going to lower this depot our SCVs here. Are under fire. And we're going to build an SCV and drop a mule. So whenever we build SCVs, we try to drop mules. Now on the other side of the map, looks like our SCV is getting attacked. So we can grab that guy. And we can see, oh, he's got an expansion. That's all I needed to know. <clears throat> Behind this, guys, let's queue up some SCVs, queue up some Marines. And we want to go for a factory next. We don't quite have the money for it yet, so we can just use this SCV if we want. We're going to be going for a siege tank. Now, this is what's main, mainly different about this Bronze to GM to our last one, guys. If you guys are wondering, what is the difference? Why why not just do the other one? Other Bronze to GMs, great. It's a very different style to this. All my new Bronze to GMs are all about showing you a different style. We're going to go for a second gas there, build a few more SCVs, keep building Marines. So... With this style, we're going to be doing a 1-1-1. One, one, one. That's one barracks, one factory, one starport. We also want to build a bunker every game for safety. So we're going to build a bunker. Uh, we'll just build that there, nice and close to the command center. Because then we can easily pull SCVs to repair it. When your command center is finished, you want to make an orbital command center, guys. And let's just keep building SCVs and dropping mules. Let's grab a few of these SCVs, chuck them on gas. And when your factory is finished, we want to build a starport and a tech lab so we can get that siege tank going, okay? Now your factory and starport, I'm using shift click to select both of those. Control 4. Barracks is on 5. And we just want to keep building plenty of marines. And we can rally down here next to the bunker. Command now that that bunker is ready, upgrade. we're happy to defend down there. So click them on the bunker once it's finished. Add and let's complete. drop mules and build lots of SCVs. Let's also try and use shift click a little bit more. So these SCVs don't just hang around, but actually go to mine minerals when they're done building their buildings. Like I said, guys, we're going to slow down and talk you guys through these mechanics in a lot more painstaking detail. We just want to show you the build at its most effective, executed properly, so you can get a gist for it. And I also think this is going to give you really valuable perspective for how much we screw it up when I'm explaining the basics to you guys. Because I'm going to be spending so much time explaining fundamental concepts and how to click on things and all the different ways of building things and selecting stuff that we're going to screw this build up and we're going to lose a lot of games. This game, though, we will not lose. We're playing against a Silver 1 opponent, this Protoss opponent that we've got. So there's there's no way with the skill level I'm playing right now and the level of just like macro and execution that we lose this game. But it's going to be very different as time goes on. Go ahead. All right, guys. Job, Keep building tanks. And we can siege this tank here on the low ground. Now, these two SCVs that build depots, their names are Gary and Bruce. They're going to be big regulars in this series, just like in the last one. And this Viking, guys, you actually want to right-click in their main and then shift right-click there. So that's a scouting Viking. That's what we're going to use every game. We'll talk more about that later. 
For now, let's queue up more SCVs, drop some mules, build another depot here, another marine, a couple marines, a tank. We're hitting our SCVs. And it's time now to build all of our production. So when you've been on 111 for a while, guys, you're going to start floating money. This is where you grab part of a mineral line. And oh, uh oh, guys, we've got to bring our marines up here. So let's go down here, grab the marines, box them, A move up here, and run the SCVs away. Okay, he flew away. That was unnecessary. I guess he saw the marines coming. <laughs> Definitely could have stayed there to kill more workers. <laughs> now, if you lose a lot of workers, guys, really simple. Just change the command center back to the mineral line. And let's show you guys. So we select the SCVs. We go build, barracks, shift, one, two, three, four. And then we go right click, right click. Still holding down shift. So they return to mining after they build that. Let's keep building SCVs, uh, building mules, building marines with a siege tank we can build a reactor on the starport as well guys now you might be like isn't it time to look at the viking scout no we're in we're in bronze league doesn't matter guys we're just gonna do the build without looking at scouting yet okay <laughs> let's build an engineering bay here and then we could also take two gases with the engineering bay that's gonna allow us to keep upgrading gary and bruce can keep building as well Let's keep building scvs building mules and you can hover over the work account you want to go to about 45 workers we're already at 43 so we're pretty much there at this point. So we don't need to queue up any more SCVs after this. Just Marines, tanks. And when these barracks finish, let's control click. That selects all of the unit type. Shift five. And when all these barracks are done, wait for them all to be finished. You want to go tech lab, tech lab, reactor, reactor. We're going to go stim and combat shields on the tech labs and then just pump a whole lot of Marine Marauder out of there. We can also get plus one weapons <coughs> from the engineering bay. <coughs> Start building, excuse me, medevacs two at a time. You can see we're out of gas, it's because we haven't put guys on gas. So check this out, nice technique we'll Add talk about later. Put two on one gas, two on the other, What's using shift on? deselecting. Another mechanic, we're Our probably not going to be using attack. too much today, but we will a lot in future shows, as that's really going to help you out. Now Gary and Bruce are going back to work. We're going to conscript a new Gary and Bruce in the main to keep building depots. And uh, we're going to go stim combat shields on those, and marines and marauders. And what are we doing, guys? We're selecting all of our barracks, right-clicking, factories and starports, right-clicking. And uh, the idea here is just making sure all of our units rally to the front in a nice kind of area, and uh, they do their thing. Also, well, when we move out, we might lose stuff to those oracles, so we're going to build a missile turret in each mineral line. That's just going to stop us taking any catastrophic damage from those oracles. Keep building depots, build more marauders, more marines, more tanks, and more medevacs. And uh, we'll basically move out when we have at least three siege tanks, preferably four or more. And uh, stim and shields is almost finished. Stim is the slower upgrade. So that's this one. So you can see when that's about two thirds of the way complete, we can start moving across the map and it should be ready by the time we get to their side. So now that the turret's ready, guys, we can just basically grab all of these units using shift and boxing these to select multiple units across multiple areas and add them together. We can unseize the tank. We can also unload the bunker and those guys to the army. More Marines, more Marauders, more tanks, more medevacs. Let's build a few more depots and just keep queuing these up for while we're going across the map. Where are those upgrades? Almost finished, guys. So let's also add Concussive. That's the Marauder Slow. And let's move out across the map. Let's lower these depots, add these guys Research to the control complete. group. Our opponent is already looking way more active than your average silver player. So that's okay. Upgrade complete. And uh, we're going to move about three. Whoa, look at that, guys. So here we go. Big army ambushing us. We're just A moving. We were trying to stim, but our stim's actually not ready. So this is one of the weaknesses of moving out before your stim is ready. Is if your opponent's right outside your base, you can't stim. Now stim is ready, so we can fight. Now notice, what was the micro that we did in that fight, guys? Basically, we select the attack command, and then we left-click it on the ground. That's what we call an attack move. It means your units will simply attack in a direction and shoot and kill anything in their way. Now, there's not really any other micro to do here, guys. We can scan ahead if we want. Um, but most important is to select your production hot keys. So select your barracks, tap four marauders, and then hold down the marine key a bunch. Then select the factories, build a few tanks, tap to the metavacs, and there we go. Beautiful. We didn't even siege our tanks. Um, we will usually be sieging our tanks even in Bronze League, but that's okay. Let's grab another army, shift those guys, shift two into our main army group, and aim move them forward. And we can press stim one more time as well. We can keep scanning ahead of our army. Always scan ahead of your army, guys. That's the Protoss way. And you can see we're moving into the natural now as well with another attack. So, fantastic. Now that there is battery overcharge, if you see that big blue thing. It's really nice to click on it. 
We're not even going to bother because we have the numbers. But normally, as you get better, you always want to click on that if your units are in range for it. And they'll kill it very quickly and it'll stop it from doing super healing. Alright, so you guys can get a gist for the build. Normally, we'd be sieging up outside their base, uh, just outside, and trying to bait them into attacking into us. But when we're starting out, we're going to be pretty much just a moving the army, sieging the tanks right up in the opponent's face, and just seeing how it goes. And that uh, gives you the gist of the basic build. And we're going to be keeping this 1-1-1 approach throughout Bronze to GM. So throughout this show, we're almost always going to be going Barracks, Factory, Starport, 1-1-1. But once we get to, you know, uh, Gold or Platinum and beyond, we're going to start branching out and getting variations for different matchups. For now, though, it's going to be a one-size-fits-all, two-base marine tank push. We've got a bunker and a tank in the early game, so we're very safe. We've got an SCV scout we're using early on, followed up by a Viking scout. So this is a really, really very safe and solid build order. The push does come a little bit later than, like, the three racks build we were teaching earlier, but we're going to have a lot more firepower with the siege What's tanks that? in there as well. Now, of course, to actually put this together, you guys need mechanics, though, so let's, let's go talk about those. All right, guys, so let's talk about the important mechanics and setup things uh, if you want things to play similar to myself and most high-level players. First things first, if you're on Windows, just search for mouse. Uh, obviously, it's different for everyone. My new computer is Windows 11, which kind of sucks, uh, but it is what it is. You want to go to mouse and you want to find additional mouse settings. This is the menu you're looking for, mouse properties. You want to go there to pointer options. And you want to make sure this is on the middle tab, six out of 11. Now, obviously, it's a little personal preference, but usually you want to make sure that's in the middle, six bars out of 11. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see, hard for me to see as well. And you want to make sure this is unticked. Enhanced point of precision is mouse acceleration. Just make sure your mouse move inconsistently. Um, there are a few pro players who are successful in different esports who use this, um, about one in 50. And the reason they're successful with it is because they never realized this setting's on by default in Windows. They played thousands and thousands of hours with it, and they were so used to it that they're unable to play without it. Um, and they're unwilling to relearn how to use a mouse, essentially. But the earlier you turn that off, the more consistent your mouse movement is going to be. And uh, most pro gamers swear by this setting being the devil and being absolutely terrible. So turn that off would be a big piece of advice in that regard. Uh, continuing with mouse settings in-game, uh, obviously, you can mouse and keyboard. Uh, enable mouse sensitivity and put it on 51%. There's some weird math stuff to do with if you have it on 51%, it's better than 50%. I don't know why. I can't remember why, but give it a go. Now, that, that's completely neutral, right? And you might be like, okay, cool. But what if I like the mouse speed to be faster? You can absolutely change this one or the Windows bar, but I would probably change this one over the Windows bar, number one. Number two, I would, if you've got a gaming mouse, just change the DPI in the software. I use 800 DPI on my mouse, uh, and the, usually a lot of players out there use very high DPI. Why? Because mouse companies advertise like, hey, 8,000 DPI, man, this is totally cool. It's terrible. It's really bad. It just means the, the cursor skips pixels across. It just, it also means like you're trying to control these tiny movements with your hand, and most players who do this end up with hand injuries over time because they're super tense trying to control these minute movements, and they're kind of going... Tuh, 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 tuh. Whereas trying to use your whole forearm for your movements is generally going to be healthier for you in the long run. I've never had any hand problems, um, hand pain or anything like that, um, but I did find, because I used to use 1800 DPI for my first like four or five years of playing StarCraft 2, um, I would misclick like crazy when I used that compared to when I lowered it to 800 DPI and I just found I was way more consistent, even though it took a while to get used to the slower speed. An easy way to adapt to this is if you've got like mouse software or presets on your mouse, you can just lower it by like 200 DPI every week or every few days and you will barely notice the difference. And that's a really easy way to slowly scale down from a ridiculous DPI to a more reasonable one. Now, keyboard settings are actually really, really important. So. You go keyboard, search for keyboard, find this keyboard properties menu, wherever it is on your computer and your system, and you want to go to the speed tab. Hardware tab doesn't matter. Now, by default, I believe that is there, I think, the repeat delay. Essentially, say you're going to be holding down, let's say A for Marines. Um, basically, you can see right now for me, that queues up crazy fast because I've gone into Windows and I have adjusted the settings even in the Windows registry to make that as fast as possible. But you can imagine if this is really long, that's really slow, that's going to basically uh, mess up the speed at which you can hold down Marines. The repeat delay means you hold down A, it's going to take a full second before it goes, oh, you want to hold the button down and queue up lots of units? Oh, okay. 
And then the repeat rate is when you're holding that button down, how quickly does it go? A, 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 Is it A, 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 or is it A, 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 Is it spamming those button presses or not? So short as possible, fast as possible. If you want to go super hardcore, then you can go and go into the Windows Registry Editor. That's right, search Reg Edit. Click on that bad boy. And you can see here, I've already got the menu open because this is the only thing I ever do in my registry. And basically you go over into H key current user, control panel accessibility, keyboard response. And uh, I really like these settings here. Now, the problem is this obviously changes the way your keyboard works fundamentally on your computer. Uh, you know, my my little nephew, uh, my, my, I guess my, my wife's cousin's son, I'll just call him my nephew was over here and he was, He's like, oh, he's, he's like into spelling. He's like a little nerdy spelling bee kid. He's like, oh, I bet you can't give me words to spell. And, and we opened WordPad for him here and I was just giving him like random words, but he just could not handle it because you hold a button down for like half a second and it just cues up like 50 of a letter. <laughs> so his brain was breaking. And I've noticed a lot of people who do try these super hardcore settings have that issue. So only change this at your own peril. I really like it. Maybe you create a different Windows login that has these settings just for playing StarCraft ladder and you use a different one for the rest. I don't know. For me, I just use this for everything now. Just you can't hold those keys down when you're typing or you're going to accidentally spam letters. But this is really nice because it just makes it so smooth to quickly. If I've got eight barracks, I can hold down the Marine key and spam Marines like crazy. Obviously, if you're brand new, some of this stuff is going over your head. So that's OK. Don't worry about it, guys. If you want, you can blindly copy what I'm saying here, but uh, best to make sure you understand what you're doing so you can revert it if something isn't to your liking. It's a lot of personal preference in settings. All right, next up is let's go back in game and look through all of these settings, guys. We've got, first of all, options. So just go F10, options, uh, mouse and keyboard. Okay, so we already talked about that up there. Now we don't want reduced mouse lag. Um, I don't like mouse wheel zoom because I, I think it's kind of easy to press, but if you have a very stiff mouse wheel, you might want to use that, turn that on, but usually there's no reason to use mouse wheel zoom. The only reason you want to ever zoom in in a StarCraft 2 match is to try and spot observers. And this is a super, super high level thing that even pros very rarely do. But if you guys want to do it, you can you can leave it turned on if you really want to. <laughs> now scrolling is way more important. Most people scroll the screen by holding their mouse on the edge of the screen. Um, keyboard is really, you should never be using your keyboard to scroll. I would actually almost advise you guys put that on zero or 1% just to disincentivize you from using it. I know there's a bunch of Forex players out there who sit there playing their like civilization or whatever, and they're using their arrow keys to move around. I use my arrow keys when I'm playing Civ as well, guys. Don't do it when you're playing StarCraft. The game is way too fast for you to have a hand on the arrow keys, kind of sitting there stroking your chin like, hmm, what's over here? What's over there? It's really slow. So crank the scroll speed up. Minimum, that should be on 40%. 40% is the lowest any pro gamer lose, uses. That's what Maru uses, and that's double the default. The default is very slow and crap. So go to at least 40%, but I would advise you go closer. Most pros use 100, I use 88. Um, try to get it higher if possible. It'll feel a bit crazy at first, but you'll get used to it very quickly. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, drag scroll is fine at 20%. That's already very fast, uh, I think. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe you do want to turn... Because that's... Mm, if, you, if you use drag scroll primarily, holding down the middle mouse button, that's a decent way of using it. You may want to increase that. I don't use that, and I actually am not an expert on that. So I'm not sure. If you guys want, you can try tweeting at Serral, Rainer, a few of those top dogs who do use a mixture of edge scrolling and drag scrolling. Ask them if they've modified that setting at all. I don't actually have any info on that. I'm mentioning Zerg players. Uh, uh, Clem, ask Clem and Hero Marine. Ask those guys. Sorry, guys. We're stuck in our Zerg bronze to GM mindset. That's what we did most recently. Disable the Windows key so you don't accidentally tab out. <clears throat> and let's go down to gameplay. Basically, just emulate all of these settings, guys. Simple command card sucks. It literally just hides options. Show alerts just fills the screen up with too much noise. When you're actually playing a solid game of StarCraft, there's too many alerts to pay attention to them. Uh, there's too much extra noise there that you don't need to know about. B display build grid's great. Uh, show current order indicator. That shows where you've clicked your units. That, that is a fantastic thing. It also allows you in replays to very easily check. Why did my units do this? And you realize, oh, I accidentally clicked on that thing I didn't mean to click on. 
Enable enemy unit selection is very important. That's not on by default, so you can click on your enemy units and see what upgrades they've got. That's really useful. Display experience points seems pointless, but it allows you to easily see where units have died. So if you're looking somewhere else, you get an attack warning, you look over there, some stuff has died, but you don't know what died. If the enemy units just got killed, say you just blasted a whole bunch of them accidentally with Banelings, but you're too slow to see the death animation, that's okay. You're still going to see a whole bunch of experience point numbers popping up and you go, oh, I just killed 20 Marines with some Banelings or a Widow mine just killed 30 Banelings or, you know, something like that happened. My Siege Tank just killed a ton of stuff. You're going to see those nice little blue numbers popping up. This also makes it uh, quite possible to see, like, if a Dark Templar dies, something invisible, say a Siege Tank kills it with splash damage accidentally. Awesome. You're going to get the visual indicator of that. So experience points is just there as a little bonus visual indicator. Now, unit life bars, I like always. Uh, there are some high-level players who play with damaged, but almost all pros play with always. There's a few, I think, like, the, the kind of um, chaos generation of North American GMs. Quite a few of them use damaged. I hate it. I think it's shit um, because it's very hard to see spellcasters that are maxed out on energy in the middle of an army. Uh, whereas always, you're always going to see the purple bar of energy in the middle of their army, which is why I love always. But if you want to use damage, that's okay. If you use normal targeting or selected, ugh, gross. Show flyer helper is very important because StarCraft 2 is not actually a top-down view. Flying units will look like they are further up on the screen than they actually are. So basically, if, if there's a flying unit here where it says always, that's where the graphic is. You actually want to target spells and abilities to hit it down here where control groups is, a bit below the unit. That's what Flyer Helper actually does. So there's going to be a line underneath all flying units to a little circle on the ground. You aim for that little circle on the ground if you're throwing an EMP at an oracle or something like that, if you're throwing a spell. Once again, these are small niche things, but they help you out. <clears throat> Uh, obviously, sound menu is very uh, personal, guys. Everyone has their own settings they like. Um, I know, like, uh, error sounds some people hate. Some people hate response sounds in general. I think it was Scarlet who was kind of making fun of me for having that turned on, which is like, oh, my God, isn't that annoying? Every time you're clicking, your unit's like, yeah. I don't know. I'm just used to these settings. Uh, I don't have any big personal preference. You can fiddle with these and do whatever you want. All right, guys, so now we're going to go through some hotkey settings to customize them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a standard uh, profile here. And we're going to talk about the main customizations you'd want to do. Now, if you want to use uh, grid, go for it. I'm not the biggest fan of grid. I find it a little uncustomizable, but it's also the easiest to get used to. And everything's just easy to click. So most people do like to use grid or maybe a slightly modified grid. Um... The problem with using grid itself is obviously it's like kind of set. It's just this button goes for this area of the command card. You can always go and make a standard hotkey setup and modify it to be kind of like grid, um, but you know, avoid certain issues. Like I know a lot of people have issues with like, uh, I don't know, I can't think of any Terran ones off the top of my head, but like a recent Zerg student with grid had an issue where uh, Morph Ravager was on Z and so is Corrosive Bile. So they kept accidentally morphing all their roaches into ravages when they were trying to cast corrosive bile. They'd like hold down the bile key and they just morph all their roaches into ravages. It's just like, there's just weird issues like that. Uh, I'm also not sure where lift is on your buildings. I feel like if you use grid, you're going to be a lot more prone to accidentally lifting your, um, your buildings off. So not the biggest fan of grid, but up to you guys if you want to, if you want to fiddle with it. For me, I'm going to show you guys a standard hotkey setup. I don't use this. Uh, all cards on the table. I use a very weird custom setup of the, called the core. I literally use normal hand on the keyboard, but I use the right side of the keyboard. Super weird and advanced. Only recommend it to the most hardcore players. If you want more info on that, uh, obviously you can always find that at any time by going into my Twitch chat. Let's, let's go out to me Twitch chat and I can show you guys where to find that info. So anytime, even if I'm offline, you guys can type exclamation mark core and there's a couple of links there. If you type that in my chat, exclamation mark core, you can see analysis, just type that. There's links to a thread on Team Liquid explaining it and a Discord server where there's a bunch of people that use the core and can help you set it up and that sort of stuff. But I don't really recommend that. <clears throat> just giving you guys all the tools. All right, so let's go through. What are the main things? First things first, guys, control groups. 
Now, we're gonna be using control group staling by default. So basically, there's the ability in StarCraft to create control groups by default, that's these ones. Um, but there's also new things that were added in Legacy of the Void where you can also remove those units. So whenever you're adding them to a control group, you're also taking them off other existing control groups. Means you don't get your units tangled up in multiple control groups and you're accidentally giving them competing orders and all this sort of stuff. So it's really fantastic. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna basically remove create control group and add to control group. So the normal control one to create a control group, shift one to add to control group, and instead we're gonna use those same hotkeys but for the newer commands. So that might sound confusing, just copy what I'm doing. Control one, control two. So notice we're changing all the alts to controls on these guys. And it's gonna say primary hotkey unbound each time, that's totally fine. Try to be very precise when you're pressing these buttons. If you mess it up, <laughs> then uh, you can have some unforeseen consequences. A lot of people, when they do this, they accidentally unbind left click. And I always find that pretty funny because um, they get in game and they literally can't click on anything. And they're like, what did I do? What's happening? <laughs> it's like, it's okay. Just go rebind left click. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. I'll show you. I will I will make that mistake on purpose just so that I can, uh, I can show you guys how to fix it. Now, all these ones, all the alt plus shifts, we're changing to just shift. Oh, there we go. We accidentally did it, guys. Awesome. See, there we go. I didn't even mean to do that. I was going to show it to you later, but we accidentally rebound left mouse button anyway so we're gonna have to fix that awesome all right so there we go so if you scroll up you can tell you've done this correctly guys because all the create control groups are now unbound and all the add to control groups are unbound and we're leaving them that way select control groups though one two three four five six seven eight nine zero those are still all there so we can still select these control groups once we create them and you can just check one two three four all the way through zero on control and one two three four all the way through zero now before we save this, let's go to Unbounds. And you can see that's all the stuff we meant to unbind. And what's this one? That's left click, guys. Unit management, selection. We literally remove the ability to select. Very simple. Just add hotkey by left clicking it and then left click again. And voila, we can now once again click on things. So save this. Um, are you sure you want to save it? Yep. Save it under a new profile. B to GM, Terran, uh, example, hotkeys. Okay, guys. So there we go. Now that should work very nicely. Uh, what else do we want to change here? The other big thing that we want to change is going to be our... Uh, let's get rid of that unit management menu. Let's get rid of this one. Control groups. Camera. Now, camera hotkeys are really great. It's the ability to create a location and then jump to it later. But, but the defaults suck. You'll notice that the defaults are like F5 through F5. Eight, and you'd use shift f5 through shift f8 i mean try try pressing shift f8 look at your keyboard and look at how absolutely disgustingly impossible that is it's so gross so all we want to do here guys is we're going to put these as some really basics we're going to go control f1 and some people hate this some people say these hotkeys are way too hard so if you guys really find it too hard to learn these but you really want to learn camera locations oops sorry guys press the wrong button there control f4 control f5 Control F6, Control F7, and Control F8. If you find these too hard to reach, all you want to do is investigate either the core, the core light, or one of the other custom hotkey setups where you can get the hotkeys, uh, camera hotkeys to be a little bit easier, or you just don't use them. And there's a lot of high-level players who don't use camera locations, so you don't need to use these, uh, but they are something I'll be using quite a lot in the show. Uh, I find they make the play much easier. Um, just takes a bit of getting used to to get used to them and there we go guys so we just made it control f1 through control f8 for the create location keys and f1 to f8 to recall them once again though this is going to unbind some things so go back to unbound select army units that's f2 now you've all heard what f2 is f2 uh, is select all army key something a lot of people get addicted to you could put this on spacebar if you want spacebar is not used for anything important it's used for like base camera or something like that it's actually it's not even used for i don't even know it's, if it's bound we're going to put this on caps lock. Uh, if you find that's a bit awkward, you accidentally hit it or something like that, you could use spacebar or something else. We're not going to use the select all army key until we are at least platinum league. It's a very important key, especially for Terran players. However, we don't want to rely on it. If you develop a habit of not using control groups properly and relying on select all army units, 
you will be forever handicapped. This is the heroine of StarCraft 2. If you get addicted to that key, it's just going to ruin your ability to ever do anything interesting in the game. It's attractive. People are like, oh, the game's too hard. I just want to grab my whole army and do stuff, pig. And I go, cool. And then a few weeks later, when you're trying, you're like, man, I'd really like to do some liberator harassment. I'd love to split my army up and do a two-pronged attack. I'd love to do a drop. And you can't do it because the moment you get distracted and select your army, instinctively you pull all your units to one location. So any ability to do anything interesting tactically is destroyed if you only use this mechanic. And that's why I would not be against you guys just unbinding this until you get to Platinum League or above. I think that's a really good idea to just leave it unbound. If you really need to use it in an emergency, there's a button above the minimap that you can click on. And we've got, of course, the comment in chat. I have it unbound, but I just click on the button above the map. And a lot of people say, oh, but I can't help clicking on the button above the map. I cannot help you with your own lack of discipline, unfortunately, everybody out there. Much like uh, junkies who say, how do I stop putting the needle in my arm? I go, ah, I don't know, man. You're going to have to just stop putting the fucking needle in your arm. I, uh, I'm, I, I wish I had a secret to outsource discipline to all to from from me to you guys I, I i don't have a technique for that sadly it's <laughs> that one's a bit too hard guys <laughs> um so caps lock for that now we've also got idle worker is the other button that's going to be uh unbound so if you want what are we going to use idle worker i mean we can just basically use tilde so that's the little squiggly line to the left of one on a qwerty keyboard up to you guys uh if you want to use a different key for that but uh, idle worker is a nice key. You could just not use it at all. And there's also a button for idle worker. Keep in mind, you can control click your idle worker button to select all of your idle workers. And that could be great as well. Once again, if you prefer to use spacebar or something else, go for it. Hotkeys are very customizable. This is not the end all and the be all. I'm just giving you guys a very kind of general fundamental setup here. Um, we don't need push to talk for voice chat. That's fine. I'm just giving you guys a really general setup that has like all the basics covered um, and uh, allows you to, to kind of get used to that, yeah. So we've also got, uh, people pointed out a few things. First things first, there is a downside to doing this um, control group stealing that I talked about. There are a few t uh, backsides. If you just fat finger and spam the wrong buttons on your keyboard, you will mess things up uh, because you're messing up other control groups. So you do need to be a little bit cleaner with your keyboard management for this. I believe the positives outweigh the negatives, but if you guys find it's annoying, you can just go back to the defaults and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with using the defaults uh, of the control groups. Uh, and if you need to use the stealing, you can just use the alt button instead, like the default was, that's totally fine. So that's one downside to this. The other downside is it's uh, kind of annoying. It's hard to have, uh, say you've got your army of Marines and tanks and medevacs, but then you also want your tanks on a different control group in order to quickly siege them up. That can be a little awkward with this setup, but I actually have a technique for that where you just put the tanks on a different control group, right click them on a Marine so they still move around with your army. They'll just follow that Marine and then you can still use it just like normal. So I think that's actually uh, really nice. Now, one thing that people pointed out is that the control groups are really shit. Eight, nine, zero, who's ever gonna use that? So a really cool thing you can do guys is what we can do is we can kind of go, hey, guess what? Um, let's turn zero into a dumping key. So what's a dumping key, guys? A dumping key is a button which you're basically using as a garbage bin for control groups. It is literally the, the, the trash can, as you guys would call it in America, of control groups. So if you want to, say, grab some Marines and just click them into a base to go kill some workers and you don't ever want to select them again, it's a suicide mission, you're going to look away from it, right? You're not, you're not ever planning to use it. But you just want to take them out of your current army so that you can keep using your current army. We want a way to do that without having to go... Control zero. Instead, we're going to go spacebar. So spacebar is going to be our dumping key throughout uh, this. And that's going to be really, really nice. That's going to be awesome. So what that allows us to do is that allows us to um, basically press spacebar. It's going to put those units on control group zero. And you don't ever plan to press zero later on to try and control those units again. It's just there to, with a single button press, remove them from your current control groups. So dumping is just a really fantastic technique to allow us to just throw units into the void of control groups. We also can use nine and eight as more accessible hotkeys, guys. So rather than having to select nine or eight, how about we make nine W? That's a favorite one. W isn't really used on anything important for Terran. So we can just make that W to select. 
Uh, was this nine? Yeah, nine. And then we go down to control nine. Let's make that control W. Shift nine, make that shift W. So this is something we forgot to talk about is there are random abilities and buttons that are just on the crappy side of the keyboard. V, D, R, E, these are all fine. Why is N all the way over on the right side of the keyboard, guys? It's just stupid, right? So you can always move these to the left side of the keyboard, just find a key. I don't have any special customizations for this because like I said, I don't use a standard hotkey setup, so I'm not an expert on that. But uh, definitely go around and ask around the community or find just one that works for you. And uh, anything on the far right side of the keyboard you're having to really reach for, N for nuke, uh, that sort of thing, you can move it to the left. Most of the buttons you're gonna find E, D, R, T, S. These are all great, these are all fine. But then you've got N and that's just way far over. So try to just move those over to the left. Uh, like some people are saying in chat, you could just make grid hotkeys on the standard hotkeys. Just like a customized grid setup is what a lot of people like to do there. Okay, so we've created a custom control group on W for nine. And now you can use W, control W to create group, shift W to add to group, or just W to select group. And that basically is bam, you've got yourself a new hotkey. You could do the same with eight as well. You could put that on like Q or something like that since Q is not really used in standard hotkeys. So these are really nice ones. And um, oh, oh, we were talking about really bad hotkeys you need to rebind. The main one is L. L is a terrible button. It's so far on the right side of the keyboard and you have to use that quite a lot for lifting and landing buildings. So make sure you get in there and change that. Let me know in chat, Terran players, what do you guys change that to? Because like I said, I'm not an expert on this part. I'm gonna assume, put that on H or something like that. Patrol is really bad. Patrol is really bad. It's also the least important key. You almost never need to actually use patrol, right? So I use Z for patrol. A lot of standard players use Z for patrol or lift land on Z. So you could just lift land on Z, guys. Lift and land on Z. And if you change that on one building, I think that changes it on all the buildings. Yeah, so you can see they're all lift and land as Z now. That's pretty fantastic. I've also got a really good example of control groups, guys. So just keep in mind whenever I'm saying, oh, shift seven or shift four from the control groups that show up for me and my game, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the control groups you should be using. Here's a really good example of control groups that I showed in my last Terran Bronster Jam, and I still stand by it. Main army on control group one, second army on control group two, third army is your drop defense key, or if you're being aggressive, you could use it for your own offensive drop. Four is your command centers, five is your barracks, six is factories and starports. And uh, I like to use also my small, my side mouse buttons to tab forwards and back. If you guys want to do that, you can set that up as well. Or if you're just used to using tab on the keyboard, that's totally fine. It's up to you. Um, that's, a, that's, that's a purely personal preference. But th the whole point here is to make sure you use the exact same control group setup every time so you can build muscle memory. Um, there's a lot of players I know who get to platinum or diamond and their control groups are always shifting to different things. And StarCraft is all gonna be about doing things in the same way to build muscle memory so the basics take care of themselves and you can focus on like the tactics and the strategy rather than oh which button are my command centers on which button is my main army on right now you don't want to be having to try and fumble around with your units you want to just know main army is always on one command centers are always on four and all that sort of stuff all right guys we're getting into our games we accidentally we need to swap back to the hotkeys that i'm actually used to using there we go and let's talk you guys through it. Okay, guys, so first game properly doing the build. What do we do? We rally our first SCV, SCV to the ramp. We queue up another SCV, change the rally point back to the minerals. And then you want to build a depot. And you want to make sure this is flush with the corner yeah. of the ramp, just like that. So if you have to hover over kind of where it can't build, then move it down slowly. That's a nice way to make sure you get it. And then you want to keep building SCVs. Now, we also want to go Control-7, or in this case, probably Control-4 or 5, depending on whatever your command center is. I'm just going to say Control-7. You can see my control groups here, as that's going to correspond to what shows up down here. The idea is add it to your command center control group and build up to 16 SCVs. So we've got that 16th SCV start. As soon as the depot's done, you want to build a barracks. And notice, once again, flush with the depot, and then start a gas right after that. So we want to go barracks, gas, and then keep queuing up SCVs here to 19 supply. So we need one, two more after that to go 18, 19. We also want to grab an SCV. We're going to send that across the map. So you just want to go yep. shift click, shift click, and then hide behind the expansion with another shift click. And then you can double tap your command center control group to jump home. 
We then want to grab two workers and put them on the gas. And if you do that a little bit earlier is better to make sure you have no downtime on that gas building, okay? Now, the important thing to pay attention to is the supply because that tells us when to do things in our builds. And 19 is when we stop building SCVs. Why? Because the barracks is about to finish. So when that barracks finishes, we want to make an orbital command center and a reactor. And the barracks, we're going to go control five. So we're going putting that barracks on that key. And the SCV that built it, we're going to send down to our natural and we're going to build a command center there. Now, I'm going to have a lot of money floating this game because we're kind of slowly explaining everything. As you get better, you're often going to have these units kind of doing the thing and you're not going to have enough money. You're going to have to wait a second to do it. After the command center, we want to build another supply depot. And then let's use shift click, guys. We'll talk more about that later, but let's use shift click to always queue these guys that are building buildings to then go mine resources afterwards, okay? We can also lower that depot. And let's go back to Add our main base. And, and we're basically going to build SCVs and mules. Now, when we're first starting, guys, so always drop the mules on these close mineral patches, but also queue up at least two SCVs at a time. When you're first starting, three or four SCVs at a time is totally all right. As you get better, gotcha. you don't want to do that. But when you're first starting, it's always important to have non-stop SCVs building. I'm going. So it's going to be really important to queue up extra workers because ah, we're slow on? as shit as a brand we're new player. SCVs. And we basically just need that's to take wild. account of that. Now our SCV scout died, but it saw that our opponent was expanding. And that's the only goal of that SCV. So if we know they're expanding, how do we react? We don't. We just keep doing our normal build. It's just if they don't have an expansion, then we'll drop a scan on their base. That's the only response we have as part of this build. Here. Let's put two guys on the other gas in my main base and let's grab an SCV and we're gonna send it down here to build a bunker on the natural, okay guys? Now, when your command center finishes, you wanna go straight for an orbital command center. That's gonna start giving you the energy. That's this pink bar here, this purple bar. And whenever that hits 50, you're allowed to drop mules. So once again, let's build a few SCVs and drop a mule and always on one of these close mineral patches because that means the mule which has a timed life of 64 seconds if it's on one of the far away patches it's going to only mine one less trip because it has just a little bit of extra kind of space that it has to run back and forth Command center has been now guys when your barracks is finished you want to queue up at least four marines at a time we're going to queue six because we're floating money like crazy and we're also going to build a star fort and a tech lab on the factory so basically, guys, when your barracks finishes, that unlocks the factory tech. When the factory tech finishes, that unlocks the starport tech. So basically, when your factory finishes, you always want to build a tech lab on it so you can get a siege tank and build a starport. And we're also going to grab the factory and the starport using shift click. We're going to put those on Add control on group four. We're going to build a siege tank. And guess what, guys? Our main base is saturated. See how that number's red? 17 out of 16. So at this point, we go to our natural. If we haven't already done it, shift seven. We then select hotkey seven, right click on the minerals, queue up a ton of SCVs by tapping that SCV key. Always guys, I'm gonna often hover over here next to me, but I'm not clicking it. I'm using the hotkeys, okay? When you're first learning, you need to like, oh, what's that, what's that? You might need to hover over to have this tooltip pop up. I'm showing you just for visualization, kind of what I'm doing, but don't actually be clicking that. Always use the hotkeys from the very start or you're gonna be massively handicapped if you don't get used to that early on. So drop some mules uh, here on these mineral patches, build some SCVs. Then we're gonna build a whole bunch of Marines. Then we're gonna build some tanks. And then we're gonna build a Viking, okay? Now you're gonna notice we're supply blocked. Up to this point, you didn't need to build any supply depots other than these first two. And that's because your command center gives you 15 supplies. So it gives us a lot. But once you get to about 35 to 40 supply, when you're getting close to here, this 46 supply block, you wanna start building supply depots. If you forget to tell too late, you want to build two depots at once. So notice I boxed two SCVs and we're going to introduce you guys to Gary and Bruce returning characters from our last Bronze to GM. So we're under attack in our main guys. Now if you're ever under attack like that you just want to box the SCVs and run them away. That's a liberator so it can only shoot in that white circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all these units that shoot up and we're going to try and go towards it. Now it's unsieged so we're just going to attack move. They're going to kill it and we go cool problem dealt with. So what's the first thing we do? Return to mine. Now, this is where we can put everyone on minerals. And then we can also put the guys back on gas. One on that gas. And you can see this one needs two as well. So we put two on that gas. There's a better way of doing that. We'll teach you guys down the line. For now, whenever you get distracted, it's important to get back into your macro. So select your command centers, hold down the SCV key, drop some mules. And because we lost a lot of SCVs here, nice technique. Select that command center and just change the rally point back to its minerals. And that's going to even those workers out over time, okay? Build some more supply depots with Gary and Bruce. 
And let's build more marines, another tank, and we can build a reactor on the starport. Now this Viking, its job is normally to scout our opponents. What we're going to do is we're going to right click it into our opponent's base and then out through the natural. And you can see, well, we've got two bases. We've got our 1-1 one, one pumping. What's next in the build order? Next build thing is select a bunch of workers in your mineral line. And we're going to go build barracks. And then we're going to hold down shift. And we're going to go left click, left click, left click, left click in a nice neat row. And then we're going to right click back on the minerals twice. Okay. That's going to both get rid of the uh, command set, the barracks build. And it's going to tell them to go back to mining. All right, guys. So control click the barracks what do they just do what's control click what the fuck is that pig control click control click control click notice it's this wireframe down here shows what we've got selected it selects all of that unit type or building type on your screen so we're going to control click the barracks shift five set the rally point to the top of our ramp easy peasy we're going to build a lot more scvs drop some mules drop some mules build some more marines on the barracks and then we're going to select the factory, so select number four, build a tank. And you can see these little white pips. That was two tanks I just queued. I can then tab to the starport and start building metabacks. Beautiful. Now our barracks are finished, so we can just select five. Don't go clicking on them. I see people do this. They go, build tech lab! Build tech lab! No, don't do that, guys. Just select five. Tech lab, tech lab. Reactor, reactor. Got two tech labs, two reactors. We're going to have a double tech lab, triple reactor setup, just because that's kind of a nice, well-balanced setup. Go ahead. Now, Gary and Bruce haven't been building depots for a while, guys. We've been taking a very long time to explain Go everything. Back. Once they've finished walling off, I'm using Add shift to move them up here and to build more depots, despite that I'm still massively supply blocked. Now, if you are heavily supply blocked, guys, it's totally okay to use cooldown extra supplies. You want to use them on these safer depots on top of your ramp, not the ones at the front that are more likely to die. So we just did two supply drops. That's going to free up supply so we can keep building things. Add-on is up and running. We're going to get stim and combat shields. I could have easily just boxed those guys because they're the same unit type or building type. I can just box and then go stim shields. So notice, rather than going stim shields, always try to batch things up and just do it more efficiently, okay? So stim shields, and we're going to start building marauders on the barracks so i always like to queue the marauders first and notice i queue up four marauders on my barracks and then i hold down the marine key so you're going to see the four marauders queued up on these last two barracks and then the marines queued up on the other ones we can even tap a few more marines there we then build tanks and medevacs and let's check our economy main base is oversaturated as is the natural and we forgot our next part of the build guys engineering bay and two gases okay now if i shift right click that's not good why is that not good guys because don't i want these guys to mine the gas I want the Engineering Bay SCV to go back to mining minerals, not just stand there, but I want those guys to do What's their own thing. On? So it's nice to build the gases a bit separately. So now I have to put three guys on each gas rather than the normal two to join the one that built it. So we can go, oh, and notice if you're, if you're doing this, oh man, I can't select three, this is really hard. Really simple, guys. Selected five, just hold down shift and left click twice. And then right click we on the minerals. Mineral Get plus one weapons deplete. going, guys, and let's go for more marines, more marauders, more tanks, more medevacs. <gasps> We're still supply blocked. I don't know what happened to Bruce, guys. Oh, Bruce got locked outside. This is why I like to leave at least a couple of depots down normally, guys, because Bruce got locked outside of my base. Gary's up here alone, feeling very lonely. Research complete. And uh, if you're ever super supply blocked like this and floating lots of money, it's totally okay to grab a few more SCVs and just build a bunch of depots as a one-time boost to help keep up. As we get more instinctual with the build and Gary and Bruce basically always have an extra depot queued up, you're not going to be hitting these supply blocks as often. But when we're starting, we're just way we're slower at everything. So it's only natural for us to basically be messing everything up. And keep in mind, when you guys start on the ladder, it's not going to be like that first game in the Bronze to GM where you just annihilate your opponent. You start in the middle of the ladder against mostly Platinum League players. And a lot of people don't realize that and they get really demotivated when they hop on the StarCraft ladder and they lose their first matches. All we're doing, guys, is building Marines and Marauders off the barracks, building tanks and building medevacs, and we also add the concussive shells. Now, you might be wondering, well, shouldn't you be building more SCVs? No. Once you get to about 45 SCVs, that's all you need. So hover over your supply up there in the very top. Top number is your army supply. Lower number is your worker supply. We have 46 workers. That's more than enough for two base. You can already see my main base is mining out. We've got way too many workers, even with 45, 46. 
Awesome, guys. So it's time to grab our army now. Let's just... Using shift and box click. If you've got to select units from multiple areas, hold down shift while doing the boxes, and it's going to add all those units yes, to your current selection, okay? Go, go, go. So let's try that again. Box, left, shift, left click, shift, order. left box, shift, left box. We're going to go control Research two, complete. and it's time to move out. When is it time to move out? When stim and shields is done, Upgrade and you've got at least three or four siege tanks and a decent army. Now we're going to press stim, and we're going to attack them. Also, if we siege our tanks, that's really good. So what you want to do is you want to control for the tanks, and you want to press that siege button. Now this was really late for me to siege, because I'm slowly talking you guys through it. And let's hold down the barracks key and build more marauders, more marines, more tanks, and more medevacs. Unfortunately, it looks like he beat us, guys. We can try to set our rally point back Nothing on top of our ramp and defend cluster. there. But as long as he pushes in, unlikely we're going to be able to defend it. Very well played by our opponent. He has 2-2 two, two upgrades. We only have plus one weapons. He's got plus one and he had a big, big army. So really well macroed by our opponent, our Silver League opponent. He played really good StarCraft and we're going to have to tap out. GG, well played. All right, guys, next game, let's go. First thing, select the command center, build an SCV, rally it to your ramp, and then control seven or control five, whatever your command center is on. And then remember, we want to queue up another SCV. So it's going to be 14 SCV supply ready. depot with this first SCV right on the edge of the ramp, yep. just like that. Very nice, guys. And we're going to queue that there to where the barracks builds. Now we reselect the command center, put the rally point back on the minerals and queue up a few more SCVs, right? because we want to go to 16 supply, remember? So this one takes us to 15. The next one's going to take us to 16. And we can already get ready here, basically, for building the barracks. So already, the moment the depot is done, we're already trying to build barracks. And then we go back to our mineral line, and we build the gas. Beautiful. Now you go back to the barracks. We want to go control five. We also can queue the SCV down to the natural. We do need to keep building SCVs, guys. So let's make sure we keep building SCVs in the command center in the main. Remember, we want to queue three more up to 19. And when the gas is What's getting close on? to finished, you want to grab a few more workers and tell them to mine. And it's better to mine a few seconds early rather than a few seconds late. So what else do we do, guys? SCV scout, right? So whenever you get the chance, send that SCV scout across the map. Try to hide that behind their expansion. You can do it a little bit earlier, that's great. Because we're still learning the basics, it's not as high priority as just kind of fixing our build and getting everything going. So barracks is finished. We want to go reactor and then orbital. Beautiful. And check it out, guys. Look at this. This time around, last time I had 500 minerals. Instead, we're actually down there early with this SCV. And we can build the command center pretty much immediately. And let's also be disciplined with that shift click. We'll talk more about that later. For now, we're still mostly focusing on the build for these first few games, guys. But then we're going to talk a lot more about the habits once the build's a bit more natural. We're going to shift 7, the command center, command as well as rally it to its own upgraded. minerals. Orbital's finished, so let's build an SCV, drop a mule. And we want to grab an SCV, and we want to build that depot, as well as queue it back to the minerals. Beautiful, guys. Let's lower that depot. Let's start building marines, so we can build a lot of marines and a lot of SCVs here, get that production going. Now, if your opponent already has an expansion, this SCV doesn't need to stay there. So you can just bring that SCV home. And a nice habit, guys, is if you put that SCV on Control 2 or Control 3, you can easily just select that button and then bring it home by just clicking it on a mineral patch. And you don't even need to look. You can just look at the minimap, be like, oh, there's an expansion. Select SCV, click on the minerals, and it'll make its way home. Now, after your barracks is up, that second depot is building, we want to go for a factory, shift click back, and then a second gas. Keep queuing SCVs here, guys. We're building lots of SCVs, lots of Marines. And every now and then you want to box that army and go control two. Notice there's some Zergans coming in. So we're going to attack move these Marines to the natural expansion, guys. Unfortunately, we lost the SCV. Doesn't matter. Let's make the orbital command center as soon as that's done. And let's get the bunker. And remember, shift click the SCV back to mining. Absolute game changer. So that gas is up in the main. We can grab two workers, put them on the gas. And because this guy is going to be building the factory, remember the starport finishes after the factory. So we can just tell that SCV to go there. Now our main base is at 16 workers. So we can just go to the natural and basically go... Drop those mules and queue up a whole bunch more SCVs. We can also get these marines and put them inside the bunker as soon as that's done. We're going to build more marines here on top, more SCVs. We've got lots of SCVs. You can see at least three queued up, lots of marines queued up. 
then we're going to build a starport, cue the SCV back, and a tech lab. Now remember the factory, shift click, starport, both are going to go on control 4 for me. Obviously you guys are probably going to use a different button yourself. Now look at this guys, we're at past 40 supply, so we're a little bit late to get Gary and Bruce going. So let's get them both started at the same time. If we started on time earlier, we could start with just a single SCV, we'll do that more when we're higher level. For this level, we're just going to always build two at a time to make sure we never get supply blocked. Now let's keep building SCVs here, keep dropping mules, build more marines, build tank, and notice I don't have enough money there, so I keep pressing until I have it, tab to this, and we want to build a viking. We have enough money now for that viking. And we're just setting the rally point, so barracks right click, factory starport right click. And we're also going to lower the other depot, just so we have free movement paths around our base, okay? Let's go back and build another depot here. We can also keep the entrance open, and then both these guys can go up into the main to build more depots up there, okay? So more SCVs, more mules, more marines coming out, more tanks, and we can build a reactor out of the starport as well. Now this is where we put the safety high ground siege tank, guys. Always put it on the edge of the high ground, so even if our main starts getting overrun, it's very hard for them to get to this siege tank, and he actually covers a lot. Really nice. Also, our Viking is going to fly across the map through our opponent's main and natural using shift click once again. Just super chill, super calm. Just going to give us some scouting info on what's going on. Let's keep building depots here with Gary and Bruce. And now, guys, we've got a lot of money floating, right? So let's queue up a few more SCVs. Always keep that SCV production going, the Marines, the tanks, and the medevacs. And that's going to spend a lot of the money, but you're going to see the money's coming in really fast now. And that's because we've already got two bases filled with workers. So it's time to do the next step. And that is, of course, going to be our barracks. So build barracks, hold down shift. One, two, three, four. Now be careful when you do this, guys. Don't be doing this. I see a lot of people do this. And you know what the problem is? They're all blocking each other. So look at what happens. Your SCVs are going to go out to build barracks and they're all getting cancelled because they're on top of each other. I clicked five times, only two barracks build. So try to be careful with that. Try to make sure you actually build them just in a nice, neat row. And uh, you'll get a feel for building placement. Remember, a barracks is a 3x3 three three structure. So it's 1, 2, 3 to give space for a barracks. 1, 2, 3 to give space for a barracks. And this is why this display build grid is really helpful. Let's control click the barracks and go shift 5, guys. And let's go. How many SCVs? Oh, we've actually got plenty of SCVs, guys. So let's get the double gas. Let's also get the engineering bay. And all we need to do is just keep putting marines, tanks, medevacs. And these barracks, which we've already control clicked onto our hotkey, we can set the rally point. And when all of them are done, we will add add-ons. We don't need to do it just yet. Keep Gary and Bruce just constantly pumping depots, guys. If you have to always have two extra queued up, that's totally fine. The whole idea is we're going to come back periodically to do that. That's something I'll talk to you guys about in the future. We're going to, we're going to introduce a macro cycle where we always do this in a bit more of an organized fashion. For now, we're still getting used to the pieces and kind of what everything does. So we're just taking it very slow. Plus one weapons. And then all the barracks are done. So what do we do? Tech lab, tech lab, reactor, reactor. And keep in mind, we're very slow on these barracks, right? We're floating lots of money because these barracks are so slow. These barracks could easily be coming up two minutes earlier. It's just going to take us kind of getting more comfortable with our build and a little bit faster at jumping between these tasks. Add As we get better at that, we will do everything way faster. We'll get more money earlier and then we won't be floating so much money. And that's something that is just naturally going to happen as we get better at doing the build order. So there's a lot of people who would say, well, shouldn't you be building 10 barracks then 12 barracks? We're actually not going to because I think it's a really good benchmark to say, hey, this is the right amount of production for two base. Why not just stay on this? And then as we get better at the build, we should see that number get lower and lower up there. And we should be getting our production up earlier, our army up earlier. And we'll actually be able to kind of gauge our improvement by that bank getting smaller as well as our attack hitting faster. So we've started stim and shields, guys. We're mixing in marines, lots of marauders, tanks, and medevacs. Now that's an overseer. So what you can do is you can just move these guys over and try to just attack move that overseer. And also control two so this army is all on the right control group very nice 
He gets away. It is what it is. Gary and Bruce are going to keep building depots, guys. But this is two base production. Remember, one base is three barracks, a factory and a starport. Starport. Two bases is five barracks, a factory and a starport. And you, whilst you will eventually get a bit of money to squeeze in a third base or something like that, this is enough to spend the vast majority of your money. And uh, it's really what you need in most situations. Now you can see, guys, our upgrades are almost done. Let's queue up concussive shells. And remember, Stim's almost done. That's our move out timing. So let's unseage the tank, shift, box those units, control two, move them to the front. Let's also unload the bunker. Add those guys. So select them, shift two. Let's lower this other depot and let's move across the map. So we're going to move about three quarters of the way across the map there, guys, with a bit of an A move. And oh, there's an army here, guys. So let's stim. Now, he has Ling Bane. Let's scan that army. So against the Ling Bane army, guys, you actually want to spread your bio out a little bit, if possible. Now, obviously, he has an army that's way too big, and he's probably just going to beat us. So what are we going to do? First of all, queue up more Marauders, more Marines, more tanks, and more medevacs. If we can get a plus one armor upgrade, that'll be great as well. But essentially, there we go. Plus one armor's on the way. We want to just try and scan, figure out where is that army. You can see he's over there. So let's control click the siege tanks. This is how we're unseaging. The other way you can do it is just tabbing. If you've got Marines, Marauders, Medivacs, you will need to tab a few times. So if you select your army number two, you can go tab, tab, unseage. I prefer to just control click the siege tanks to siege and unsiege. Siege, unsiege. And our opponent comes back in right as we unsiege. Let's select the whole army and press stim. And let's also build a lot more Marine Marauder, guys. We've got another big army here. A move down, shift two. And we're gonna press stim and attack move one more time, okay? It's very hard to move out against Mass Baneling, but because we just killed that army, we might have a chance. So shift to A move to here. And we're going to even set the rally points potentially just down to the natural. We're also going to build more depots as well as let's try to rebuild this depot here, guys. So select the SCVs. We want to build the wall. So remember, use shift. And these guys can all go down here as well. These guys are going to go shift two, come across the map. And we can see, where is his army at? Looks like his army's back there. So let's move in deeper. I don't see any banelings. They're just morphing now. So I think we can move in pretty deep, guys. So we're going to actually stim and attack. And then we're going to control click the siege tanks and stim those up, okay? If there was banelings, we would have sieged a little bit further back. But as it is, we're just going to try and shove in when he's not ready. We don't quite manage to take him out. We're going to try another wave in a little bit, okay? build more tanks more medevacs lots more marines and marauders and you know what we're probably gonna lose and this is exactly what we should have happen and you should have happen in your first probably five to ten ladder games too many people go into starcraft ladder trying to win from the very get-go i guess if you want you could be one of these people who plays 50 games against ai and then you get on the ladder and you go straight to gold league but why not just hop on the ladder straight away lose your first five to ten games as practice get put down in bronze or silver um, and then go from there. Keep in mind, a lot of people I know, they, they try to do that, but because they get a few leavers, people who just leave the match in their first few games, they get put in, say, Platinum, and they get very upset because they know they're not a Platinum League player, but they're in Platinum League and they feel like, they're, well, their StarCraft career sucks, right? Because now they're going to be stuck playing Platinum players for the rest of the season. They find out that mid-season demotions aren't a thing, and this is where most Bronze players just stop playing. They're just like, well, fuck this. This is so terrible. Fuck this game. Oh no! Look at that, guys. So we moved out into him with an attack move. Great fungals all over our army. But uh, Medivac's able to heal through the fungal, funnily enough. There was no banelings in there. We can actually stim. Does our opponent have 2 2? I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's see if we can catch those infestors, guys. Let's A move after him. Aha! Yeah, he's, got, he's got upgrades as well. Cool. Let's grab these guys. Shift 2. And I, arguably what you should be doing in these sort of scenarios, guys, is actually just um, spreading out these pushes in big technical positions. But we're just kind of stimming and A-moving and then sieging our tanks once we're in range of the enemy base. Now, once we're there, we can spread out our units a little bit if we want to. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to attack up the top to keep killing his economy because we know there's lots of drones up there. That's just going to force him to fight us. Mineral and every now and then we select our barracks. We build lots of marauders, lots of marines just holding down the marauder key, holding down that. 
And we build lots of siege tanks Nothing and lots of medevacs as well. Now, how do we know there was a base up here? Because when this base died, the drones started running to the left. Because the drones are automatically still trying to return minerals to the closest hatchery. So that told us that, hey, he must have a base there. Now, our opponent has a base there as well. And there. And they're building one down here as well. Crazy. So we're going to stim and attack move. And remember, if our marines are very clumped up. They're very weak versus banelings, guys. So they're going to get absolutely hammered. But we've got another army back here as well. So let's go back here, shift to, and because we killed the top bases, we'll attack down the bottom now. Uh, um, so yeah, even though mid-season demo demotions don't exist, just remember your matchmaking rating will change. Um, for the guys who are live in my Twitch chat, you can all press uh, exclamation mark MMR. Let's scan to see where his army is. That's okay. We don't care about that. He's going to try and counterattack, but I think I think if we just keep building marines and marauders at home, we'll be okay. And then these guys can push in and try to kill his economy. We can just stim in there. And A move. And it looks like he's going to attack at home, guys. So we can attack move our SCVs. We'll we'll stim our army. Or we can just raise this, since it looks like we're going to lose that position. We're going to try and build more marines on the high ground. Our army here is going to try and attack towards his main base now to win the game. So we've got to have urgency in a base trade like this. He's going to kill all my stuff at home, so I want to kill all his stuff at home. So by attack moving in the back of his main, my army should automatically do that. And all I need to do is stim them every now and then. Now back at home, you can see these guys are going to kill a lot of Zerglings, especially if we stim them. But what we should have done was pull my SCVs to also fight there. So we're going to pull the SCVs now. If they repaired the wall, that would have been much better. But they're still going to kill some stuff. Now, because my main base is basically dead at this point, we can't get any new units out, we're just screwed. We can use the select all army key just to make sure everything's on my main army and just keep attacking into this main base and just pressing stim to make sure the army goes up there. This is a very close game right now. There is still a base in the bottom right, but I don't think there was any drones down there. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my opponent has an ultra cavern. So we're going to have about six ultras pop out momentarily, guys, and they're probably going to finish the game. Now, you might think, well, why don't you just click on them? That's the reason. They're very hard to kill. So even... And he gets a refund. Oh, those are all Zerglings. Oh, maybe he doesn't have money for Ultras. Maybe he doesn't have any gaps. Let's stim again here. Oh! If he's out of money, we win the game. I figured he had a big bank of resources. Wow, we won, guys! Woo! Now, I obviously did things a bit more advanced than the full-on bronze level. But at the same time, I think I did it at a pace where you guys could pick up a lot along the way. That's a pretty intense game, but I hope you all learned a lot from that. Let me know if you think that was too much. I should have just let myself die after a move the second push looked away. I think that was a pace which was pretty good for the learning because I was kind of like still letting my army clump up. I wasn't really doing any advanced spreading. I was just kind of awkwardly sieging the tanks on a slow delay in my opponent's face. So I think that was pretty good. Um, Obviously, some people be like, well, that's not act actually bronze play. We're never trying to perfectly show bronze play. We're just trying to show play at a level where bronze players can learn from it, essentially, is the main thing, right? So um, I think it's good for me to try to win as long as I just do it very slowly and awkwardly with like, you know, without really resorting to too much speed or anything like that. And um, yeah, I think there's some, some cool details. So Let's go back a little bit and just say, okay, cool. So we're getting the order of the build down. And what's most important is memorizing that order, guys. At this stage, it's getting the order down. It's you go for the 16 racks, the 16 gas. So 14 depot, 16 racks, 16 gas. Then you go to the command center, then the second depot, then the factory, then the second gas. What do we do after that, guys? Orbital command center when our natural's finished. We then get a starport and a tech lab when the factory's finished. Right? We use the Viking to fly across the map from the starport. <clears throat> we build a siege tank to put on the high ground. And the next step, guys, is to build those four barracks. Now, something you're going to notice is... At this point, I'm still queuing up four SCVs on each command center and like a billion Marines, which is good because my macro sucks as a new player. But it's also something to realize is if I didn't queue up 
quite so many SCVs and depots ahead of time, as well as a billion marines and tanks and everything, we would be able to get those extra barracks up earlier, right? So as we get better at the build and we're faster, we can kind of just have two SCVs queued, um, only one depot building right now, and we could already have four barracks down. How much does four barracks cost, guys? 600 minerals. Even at this point, if I just pause on my production for a moment, don't queue up any more SCVs or Marines or tanks for like 30 seconds, build my four barracks, they could start at five minutes. Whereas because I'm just slowly explaining all the details and kind of going through everything, I'm not doing that for quite a while, right? And you can see, rather than five minutes having the four barracks started, it is like not even six minutes, it's like 6.20 because I was also showing you how to make sure the barracks aren't overlapping as well. So that's definitely a thing. Is it possible to research stem pack from control groups? Yeah, if you control group the tech lab. You would need to control group the tech lab. That's something we never really do because you only need to upgrade those upgrades once or twice in the early game. So we just manually select those. Uh, if you really want to control group it, maybe you have a specialty upgrade control group and you're like, when you build those tech labs, you add them to it. If you like doing that, go for it. I wouldn't heavily recommend it. After we get the four barracks, we get the engineering bay and the two gases, and then we stop building workers at about 45 workers. I went to 50 this game, a little bit higher than was necessary, not the end of the world. We keep making marines, tanks, medevacs, we make stim and combat shields, and when those upgrades are getting close to done, we push out for a big attack. Now, if those barracks were done earlier, we could have pushed two minutes faster, right? So let's look at when we pushed out, and I just wanna give you guys context, because if you felt like I should have lost this game, and I, I agree, I wasn't in the greatest spot, my opponent had 60, <laughs> 61 drones, double upgrades, mass macro hatcheries. And this is this is why this player is way higher than silver, clearly, because they're following my my recent Zerg bronze to GM by the looks of it. <laughs> they're, it looks like they're following my previous bronze to GM and that's a frigging abusive build. If the Terran doesn't harass and sits in their corner this long, <laughs> the Zerg gets into a really good position against this man. Oh, um. So yeah, basically, if I moved out two minutes ago, my opponent is mostly on economy. Great upgrades, great economy setup, doesn't have that big an army. The extra minute and a half, two minutes delay on this push out, I may have a bigger army, but look at how hard it is for me to actually move anywhere near the enemy territory. And because he's more mobile, this is a huge problem. Um, and this is why in the lower levels, we just want to get better at executing so we can get more stuff earlier and faster and do better that way. As we get to a higher level, if we were pinned in this scenario, we'd do something like load up a drop and go drop the main with a medevac, and we'd send a medevac to drop down here at this base as well. That would try to distract the Zerg, pull their army home, and that would allow my army to push across the middle of the map at the same time. That is a much more advanced solution though. The reason I'm not gonna talk about that any longer is that's for when you've got all your basics down. For us right now, come on, our build order sucked. We were floating 3K minerals at like the seven minute mark. That's crazy. There's so much improvement we can do in executing this build to just hit it way better and faster. But for now, as long as we're starting to get the rhythm of the order, this, then this, then this, that's gonna make us a way better player. So let's take a look at the build order really quickly here. So really review the build order. Keep looking back at this build order between games. Check your replays to make sure you're doing it correctly. Just make sure you're following that order. And remember, you've got the main build order, chronological based on supply, but you've also got these indentations which are, of course, basically what you do with that structure. So the barracks itself builds a reactor and then builds marines nonstop. The factory itself builds a tech lab, builds a siege tank, and then it uh, basically goes just siege tank production nonstop, actually. We simplified the build order a little bit, so let me simplify that. Um, and this one as well. The, meta the starport we build when the factory finishes, and then we build a viking, reactor, and medevac production. And then we build eBay plus second and third, uh, third and fourth gas. We also want to go four racks at once. Two tech labs, two reactors, and then obviously stim, shields, then concussive, mix of marauder and marine production. Having marine marauders mixed in is something you won't see pros do early on, but this is going to make us way easier to... It's going to make it way easier for us to absorb banelings or any sort of surprise damage that jumps on our army. Marauders are a lot tankier. So this two tech lab, three reactor setup is going to be way better for us. Get rid of that last bit of the build. You can see there's also a few sub notes to the build, like 
hey, when you scout, first of all, are there buildings in their base? If not, they're proxying us and we'll respond by building a bunker on the high ground, we'll fully wall off, and then we'll go back to doing the normal order, but with the command center on the high ground, at least to start. Um, also, if they don't have an expansion at 3 minutes 30, if our, if our SCV hidden behind the expansion is like, hey, there's nothing here, then we can scan their main base at 3 minutes 30, just to see what they're doing, see if there's anything crazy like battle cruisers. We've also got attack timings when stim, shields, and plus one attack are finished, and you have at least three or more siege tanks and a few medevacs move out and try to kill them. Um, if it doesn't win the game, you can just go again. If that doesn't work, you can try round three of the attack or just GG if you think you don't have a chance. It's not, not a big problem to GG and just focus on basically improving your build, improving the execution. You really want to be internally focused. And this is something a lot of players who play video games basically never learn this. They're just like, I just want to shoot the other guy in the head. I want to kill his stuff. Uh, StarCraft's going to reward you if you can just focus on getting better at your own skills. And that's what you really want to focus on when we're starting here. So guys, we're going to talk more about the fundamental habits over these next few games that are important. We're still going to be doing the build and progressing it. But the more important thing is things like camera location. So control seven, we're going to double tap seven and then make camera location one. And that's control F1 if you're using the defaults. Now, whenever I press F1, notice that's perfectly centered. We'll build the barracks and then the gas here. And then we're gonna immediately control group five, the barracks, and I like to double tap that. And then we're gonna go control F5. We're gonna make our uh, camera location there as well. So let's keep building SCVs behind this, guys. Remember, we wanna keep building SCVs up to about 19. We wanna send one across the map to scout, hide that behind the expansion. And notice we just right clicked on the mini map that time. So notice that guys, rather than going here and looking where I'm clicking, I just clicked on the mini map. I went right click here, right click here, right click here, all while holding shift. And that just makes things so much more effective. We're just finding all these little techniques to make sure we actually do it. Now, obviously a lot of you guys are probably not gonna learn the camera locations. Some of you will, some of you won't. I'd say in my experience, talking to players after they've uh, followed my Bronze Jams, it's about 50-50. If you guys don't do the camera location, that's totally fine. There's plenty of players at high level who, who don't. But because it's one of those things you kind of need to learn early on if you want to learn it from the start, it just makes it much easier. We're going to be talking about it and including it, but if you want to skip that step, go for it. Shift 7, double tap 7, control left 2 for that camera location, set the rally point, cue the SCV back. And our SCV, we don't need to chase upgraded. him anymore. He's not up to anything. We can build an SCV, drop a mule, and we'll go build that What's second depot now here. Okay, guys, and then queue it back to minerals. So always queuing things back to minerals, that's number one. F1, F2, F5. Notice we've got those camera locations. So we can also set up our third base, Control F3, and down here, click on the mini map, Control F4. So now we can go F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. And that is really nice because now we've got the ability to jump to our production with F5 and all the other bases for the other keys. This is a really useful mechanic and uh, we'll talk more about it as time goes on. For now, let's build a factory and a second gas. Let's add the factory to four. Let's build a few more SCVs, a few more Marines here. And we can just get used to going F1, F2, F1, F2. Isn't that nice? Feels good. Feels good, man. <laughs> now the scouting SCV has seen an expansion, so we can just click that home. Let's build an orbital command center. Our SCVs are under and just keep carrying up marines and SCVs for now, guys, as well as dropping mules. Remember, build SCVs, drop mules, always do those two things together. We're going to start doing this as more of an organized macro cycle soon. We're going to start talking about that in, in just a little bit. Suffice it to say that we will... After we've gone through just these basic habits, uh, for a few games, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So factory's done, let's build a starport and a tech lab. And you want the starport, shift four. So we always want it when you build a building, try to add it to your control group immediately, or you're gonna find you often forget. When your main base is saturated, what do we do? We jump to the natural, we select the command centers, control, rally them there, build lots of SCVs and drop mules. Now, Notice this SCV, I didn't queue back to mining. So that's very lazy. So we can queue that to the natural. And remember, we're almost at 40 supply guys. So it's gonna be time to get Gary and Bruce going. If we were a higher level player, we'd probably only build one, but we're just gonna build two for now, just to make sure we don't forget. We're gonna build a tank and a Viking, as well as some more Marines here as well. And what are the other big habits? When to build depots, queuing SCVs back to mining. 
multiple structures at once, always building multiple structures at once. We'll talk about that again with the four barracks we're building, as well as setting up these camera locations from the start. Now, you might be wondering, why was I doing the camera location stuff early? Notice how this is perfectly centered and that's perfectly centered. So whenever I jump to a base, I always know the command center is dead set in the middle of the screen. Whereas it's very hard to do that. So when I build a command center at a new base, I need to set that up. All right, guys, that's an Oracle attacking our base. So we need to grab my army and then A-move. It would have been better if I'd already put my army on control two so that I could easily just do this. And notice we're just gonna A-move in the direction of wherever that Oracle is. And he's going that way, so we'll A-move down there. Let's build more SCVs, drop some mules here, jump back to the main F1. Grab three SCVs, put back on gas. Now, because we lost some workers, remember that technique we talked about earlier? Change the rally point back to the minerals. It's going to be really nice. You can also build a reactor there. And it's time to build those barracks. Let's not delay those too long, guys. So one, two, three. I don't want to build four because then there's going to be an unbroken line of buildings. And that's really awkward. If I built a barracks there, my units can't move from side to side. So we're just going to build it there, guys. And then we'll just queue back to mining. Control click the barracks after you start them, shift five, and set the rally point. So what is that habit, guys? Batch the structures, build them all at once. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's oracles are back in my base. Oh no, uh, let, let's keep talking about it. Anyway, ignore the oracles, I've A-moved my army. We don't really need to do anything else other than A-move my defensive forces, guys. But basically it's build structures, control click them, add them to control group, and then set the rally point. If you do that all at once at the start and get it done in an organized fashion, it's gonna be really good. So let's keep building SCVs so we can absorb this damage. And what we can do here, guys, is we can actually split my army. So what we can do is we can grab some of these Marines and Vikings, or just, let's just grab a lot of the Marines. And if we put those in the natural mineral line, they'll defend those workers and the Viking and these Marines can defend here. And hopefully that keeps us safe. However, look at this, guys. If they ever interrupt your buildings, what do you do? Grab the SCVs, a whole bunch of them, and shift click. If you don't do that, it's very awkward trying to pull one SCV to each building. It's really easy to mess up and misclick. So that way, all the barracks are building again, and we're back on track. And you can see this time he comes back in, but our units are split up. And even though we can kill the Marines, the Viking will not be dealt with. We've still got three SCVs building those barracks, so we're looking okay. Let's build Gary and Bruce. More depots for them, since we've been very distracted. We haven't been doing that. And what's next in the build? Well, two tech labs, two reactors. And then we want to get an engineering bay, right? As well as two gases, okay? So what are we doing? More marines, more tanks, more medevacs. <clears throat> and because those oracles have been very annoying, when the engineering bay is done, we want to build a missile turret in each mineral line. That's still a little while away. So guys, once our things are done, control click the tech labs, stim and combat shields, and then marauder production, marine production, tank production, medevac production. When the engineering bay is done, always try to start plus one weapons straight away or you're going to forget it. I guarantee you guys, if you don't do these things straight away, you'll forget it. So we're putting on gas. Build a turret in the natural and a turret in the main. We don't really care too much about the production for now. If there was like mass oracle, we hadn't already killed one or two, we might build a missile turret somewhere in the middle as well. But for now, we're building plenty of marines, so we feel pretty safe. Now, unfortunately, Gary and Bruce got stuck outside, so they didn't keep building depots. So that's why we always need to lower those depots as quickly as possible, because these supply blocks are killing me right now. We're going to do a few supply drops to try to make up for that, try to get out of that. But you can see just how quickly we're spending all of that money and supply, even though we did three, four supply drops all at once. Okay, guys, so in terms of uh, production, we're at 39 SCVs. We still need to build a few more. So we'll build about five or six more workers. We've got a pretty big army right now. Now the missile turrets are up. We're going to use the select all army key because we've got units here and here and here that's way too awkward to select so this is one of the rare scenarios where we can go select all army you know what i'm gonna actually show you a really advanced technique just so you guys know how it works what if we do hold down shift and do this shift box shift box technique that i've been showing you guys that way we've grabbed all the army problem is if we tell them to do anything we've also got the scvs so if you tab notice when i tab or i click on these numbers here it goes through these screens of, of units find the scvs 
And then you want to hold down Control and Shift. Nothing left in that mineral and cluster. you want to left click. And what that does is that removes all of the unit type. Control click selects all of the unit type. Control Shift removes all of the unit type. And now we can go Control 2, A move to the front. And notice not a single SCV comes to the front. How cool is that? So we can build more Marauders, more Marines, more tanks, more Metamax here. Notice how quick that cycle was. That was me being pretty expert. You guys will take a bit longer, but... So it's always select the barracks, build the Marauders, to tap, 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 tap. Build Marines by holding the key down. Build some tanks, build some Metamax. And that's how you want to do it. You then want to queue up some depots. And that actually is the macro cycle. The only thing missing there is building SCVs and mules. But as I said, we'll talk more about the macro cycle later. Gary and Bruce, we're just going to keep queuing up depots. Looks like we forgot concussive shells. But uh, look at that, guys. Oh, okay. So he's coming in right now. We can box these guys and shift to. And we just killed every one of those oracles. The missile turret ruining his day. All right. Sick, guys. Let's move out. So let's try and scan. See where our opponent's uh, bases are at. Looks like... Oh, that unit's moving, which means his army's out here. Oh, there it is. It's like, where is his army, man? Now, look at that ball. Look at my ball. My ball looks a little bit bigger, right? So we're going to move through the middle of the map here. Try and keep scanning where his army is. So we're going to try... That's a lot of zealots, isn't it? Oh my gosh. That's all right. Anyways, always try to stop dropping mules when you're moving out. Grab these guys, shift two, and just reinforce your army. And we're going to try and move forwards and fight him. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to press stim and attack towards his army. And we're control clicking the siege tanks. And we're going to press siege. Okay? And this is a pretty bad engagement. Because the tanks only siege once the fight's already gone down. And we see that the zealots jump up above us and ruin our day. Really good micro by our opponent Storm, who also has 2 1 upgrades and seems to have forgotten to make the Psy Storm upgrade, even though their name is Storm, which is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, so let's pull back with whatever we've got. Build more Marauders, more Marines, more tanks, and more Metabacks. Now, technically, against this com army composition, zealots very zealot heavy. Widow Mines are the best unit you can possibly build. So arguably you could swap this factory off and build a reactor on it. Or, notice I've already got so many medevacs in this, guys. We actually don't need more medevacs. We've already got eight. We can just put the factory on that reactor. Star Kaport can build a new reactor in case we need it. And we can start making Widow Mines. We can queue up as many of those as we can. Now it's unlikely we win this game, guys, at this point after giving him such a good fight there. We probably wanted to mass up more army. But realistically, we just didn't macro well enough this game. I'm explaining a bunch of concepts. I floated a crazy amount of money. It was past 10 minutes when we were attacking with a two base timing that's very, very late. And our opponent just played a very pretty solid macro style. You've also got to remember my opponents are going to be even stronger than they normally are because they know that I'm basically just sitting there and macroing up. So we're just going to A move here, guys. All you want to do is control click the Widow Mines and tell those to burrow. Other than that, we've just stim and A move. My opponent's micro is pretty horrendous there. He was on move command for a while. But great, great numbers, great upgrades, good macro. And he's able to just smash through and overwhelm. We can try one more fight, stim those guys down and do an A move. And you can also try to control click these Widow Mines and tell those to borrow as well. It's unlikely that it works though. But we're building more Marines and Marauders right now. And that single Viking from the start's doing really good. But he's got Colossus as well. So let's scan. Does he have a fourth base? No. But he's got three bases going pretty heavily. We're only on two. And he's up two upgrades. That's got to be GG. GG, well played to Storm here. Takes the game. All right, guys. Getting into the next one. And you know what? Losing games is really important. That last opponent was almost gold. And uh, we spent a lot of time talking about basics. So let's queue up two SCVs. And immediately set the rally point back to the minerals, then build the depot. Check that out. Isn't that just such a nice adjustment? Shift click the SCV to where we want the barracks to build. These little details are going to be game changers. Control 7 on the command center. Double tap F1. Queue up another SCV. F2. F3. So control F3. Control F4. Control F5. And control F6. Very nice. All right, there we go, guys. We got the barracks, and then the gas goes down. And notice, to jump back to that main, I used F1. So I can go to the barracks with F6, and that with F1. Now, obviously, I'm using slightly different hotkeys, and if you're not using the camera locations, no worries. You can still do the build very well and get very quick at it. Some people like to double-tap their command center hotkey to jump to the main, and that works just fine as well. 
Put two dudes on gas. Notice we've queued one extra SCV. So we're planning at one. That's 18 supply. One more is going to take us to 19. And that should line up with the barracks finishing. Let's lower the depot ahead of time. We're going to queue this SCV down to the natural. Now, you don't have to mine the five minerals. Uh, we're just doing that because normally you don't have enough minerals to build a command center straight away. So you might as well do something while you wait. As soon as the barracks is done, I was waiting and immediately orbital command center and reactor goes down. And you can see we're just waiting for 400 minerals. Oh, I forgot to send my SCV scout across the map, guys. So we're going to pull a guy off mining just to simulate the minerals lost from that. <laughs> so you build the command center and then you go for a supply depot. We did forget to send an SCV scout this game. That's okay. Uh, I think we can put it back on mining in a little bit. We'll just tell him to do a bit of a zigzag there. Just to give us a similar amount of resources to what we'd normally have. Now remember guys, shift 7, double tap at control F2. Set the rally point and cue the SCV to mine as well. Next up is factory. Cue that to where we want the starport to build. And then the second gas. If you don't remember to do this, you just cue him back to minerals. That's fine. We're still just starting out. That's totally okay. So build more SCVs and some more marines, guys. So let's always make sure we have a few SCVs and a few marines queued up. Notice a few SCVs, a few marines. Very good. And our opponent has got an expansion. So we bring our SCV scout home here. And we put two more guys on gas just before the gas finishes. That's really good gas timing there. Now you always want to lower the other depot. We also want to build a bunker. So let's get that bunker started when the command center is done. And what are we doing, guys? Queue a few SCVs, queue a few marines, and then we can also drop a mule. But wait a second. We don't want that to be building. Orbital command center. So we just canceled by left clicking on the pictures of the SCVs. That's how we cancel. You could also press escape a few times works as well. We're then going to build a starport, rally back to the minerals, build a tech lab, and factory shift left click the starport. And these guys are going on number four. So we're going to rally everything to the top of the ramp. We're going to put just four marines in the bunker on the low ground. Everything else is going to stay on the high ground for safety. We're just going to keep building SCVs, marines, and get that safety tank. I don't have enough money. It costs 150 minerals. So I'm just going to keep pressing it until we get 150 minerals. And there we go. Now you're going to notice, guys, our supply is getting pretty high. So let's pull Gary and Bruce over here. They can return the minerals. And they can start building the double depot wall off. Beautiful. We're going to build a Viking as well. Now notice our main's oversaturated. So what we want to do is we want to rally the command centers to the natural. We also then want to grab a couple of those workers and send them down as well. Let's keep queuing up more and more SCVs. Just queuing up four in each command center. I know that's a lot. We could probably just do two is fine. Then we build more marines, more tanks. So we're tapping the tank button until a tank starts. And then we move on to the next part. Now, be careful there. If you shift click, but your tank's blocked, it'll derp out and siege where it is. So you want to make sure it has a clear path and then siege. Now, what are we doing, guys? Shift siege. So right click, shift the siege hotkey, and then hands off the keyboard, moves there, siege is up. So we're going to use our siege tanks to make sure they siege kind of cleanly ahead of time. We don't need to keep re-giving orders. So we're finishing the wall on the natural and then pulling into the main with Gary and Bruce. What do we do? After any other actions, if you're like, oh, where am I in my build? Queue up a few more SCVs, drop some more mules, build some more marines, build a tank, get a reactor now. And next will be four barracks and we have 600 minerals. So we're just going to queue the Viking through the base now, guys. Notice we use the minimap. Remember, good habit. You don't have to be, be looking. I did that on the minimap. It's, you know, you don't need to be... If you don't have to be perfectly accurate with a command, then why bother? Just do it that way. It's barracks time now, guys. So let's go for barracks, just like that. You guys are going to be a little slower on it, so I guess I'll show you more at your pace. One. Down three. Leave a few spaces. Up, up three. There we go. Just so make sure you right click twice at the end there to get rid of the build barracks command. Build a few more SCVs as well as drop mules. Build some more tanks and some medevacs. And then notice what did I forget to do? Control group. Control click the barracks, shift five, set the rally point. Really important to make sure you guys remember this. If you don't remember this, then you will almost always forget until much later and that's a problem. 
Next part of the build is two gases in the engineering bay. And this is kind of the last part of the build, right, guys? Other than just building depots and pumping out units, getting the four barracks, getting the two gases in the engineering bay. This is all of the buildings we need on our two bases. Notice we're going to put guys on gas a bit ahead of time. You might think, isn't that inefficient? Technically it is, but I'd rather do it now because look, I've got lots of other things to do. As the game progresses, you've got more important things to do. Tech lab, tech lab, reactor, reactor on the barracks. More marines, more tanks, more medevacs, just pumping those units out. And you can already see, guys, everything's looking way cleaner than in the earlier games. We're just getting better and better. And let's just make sure we always queue up at least two extra depots on these. Now, we're at 48 SCVs, so we don't need any more SCVs. So we can just drop mules, build marauders, build marines, build tanks, build medevacs. Now, what's more important than building tanks is stim and shields. I don't have enough gas for this, guys. Add if you find yourself in this scenario, select the factory, left click a few of those siege tanks. Suddenly, we've got all the gas in the world. We can go stim and shields on those tech labs. We can get plus one on the engineering bay. And then we can go back to queuing up siege Nothing tanks and medevacs and more marines and marauders here. So we just held down the marine key there to queue up all those barracks as much as possible. Gary and Bruce, we're going to queue up a bunch more depots. And we're doing awesome. Go, go, go. Completely mined out of now, if you guys want, you can put all your barracks and factories and starports on one key and tab between them. Some people like to have them on three separate control groups. Barracks on one, factories on one, starports on the other. This is all personal preference. <clears throat> and there's different pro gamers that do different things. So you guys choose whichever one works for you. Now, what did we see when we scanned earlier, guys? Looks like Nothing mass gateway, right? So maybe mass charge again. Like that last game. Opponent doesn't have a third base, so we're going to raise our wall, guys. Now, why? If our opponent's only on two base, they might be planning to just do a big giant attack. Now, as much as I want to do a big giant attack, they might be out there looking at ambush up us. I guess we can lower the wall and then just kind of send some marines out. So what we're going to do, guys, just send a few marines out on the map. Try and see what's going on. Because I couldn't see his army, and I'm just kind of wondering what's happening. More marines, more marauders, more tanks, more medevacs. And it looks like, indeed, there is a big blob of zealots out there. Okay, good to know. Anyway, uh, stim is almost finished, guys. 15 seconds till stim's done, 10 seconds. So let's unsiege this tank. Let's grab all of these units. <clears throat> Control 2. Unload the bunker. Box those, shift 2. And let's move out here. Did we scan him? Is he still there? He is. Awesome. So there's an observer there, guys. We're going <clears> to <throat> A move to clean that up. And we're going to try and fight his army. So let's move over here. And stim. And then we're going to A move. We're going to control click the tanks. Siege those up. And oh, there's more tanks that were off screen. So let's control click those and siege those as well. Looks like we did manage to kill. So we can box the tanks, unsiege them. And we're going to A move to about three quarters of the way across the map to a staging zone. We're going to jump home. More Marines, or Marauders first, then Marines, then Tanks, and then Medivacs. Box the Reinforcement. Shift 2. A, move that to the same staging point. Notice we're using the minimap for this. And we're going to use Gary and Bruce to build more depots. I don't know where Bruce went. Let's just make sure they build a few more depots. Now we can scan ahead. His army looks pretty small compared to mine. You might be thinking, don't those guys do Psy Storm? They do, but you're going to notice their purple bar is very low. They just warped in. They need 75 energy to do a Psy Storm, so he doesn't have that yet. So we can A move, siege up the tanks, and as long as those High Templar, they're still at 67 energy, 68 energy. They all die before they could have Psy Storm, even if he does have Psy Storm, which I don't know if he does. That's going to be good. So we're going to stim and A move up the ramp now. And GG, well played. GG, well played. Do you want your tanks and marines in the same control group? It's really up to you guys. If you want to put the tanks in a separate control group, let me... This is, this is going to be a common question, so I should definitely bring this up. Let's say, if I put them in a separate control group, assuming you're using control group stealing like me, you can't have them on the same control group. What you can do is you just get the tanks, right-click them on a marauder or a marine, and then when your army's moving around, the tanks are automatically following you. And you can quickly press 3 Siege. It's going to be a bit easier to Siege up. The reason I like control clicking on screen is it's very nice to learn manual control. Just to get better at clicking on the screen. 
And if you're preparing ahead, often you can siege enough. It definitely is a little slower this way. It also just makes it easier to move your army around. Whereas when they're following a unit, they can derp out a little bit and kind of get stuck behind the army or the army can get stuck on itself like this. <laughs> Which looks kind of funky if you turn around suddenly, right? And uh, moving two control groups separately is a little bit more APM intensive for lower level players. There's gives and takes to every style of control grouping your units. I just like to have everything on one army group. It also means if my army's split in different areas of the map, I'm already naturally used to just going, hey, control click siege up. And it's nice and easy. So it really just is a, there's, you know, this way is better for messy situations. This way is, way is better for adapting, but it's a little bit uh, slower to execute and that sort of stuff. Good moves by Chaos Yeti, guys. If he got a bunch of Archons out and uh, ambushed me, definitely could have been very awkward. GG's. All right, guys, let's keep working on these fundamental habits. Let's build an SCV. We've got a Terran who's 1900 MMR this game. And remember, queue up the extra SCV. Now, as soon as this SCV pops out, let's change the rally point back to the minerals. Select this guy, build the depot, and then queue him to where the barracks is. Notice how this is like a dance. We're kind of memorizing the moves. We then set up a camera location, jump to the main, queue up another SCV to 16, double tap 7 after making control group 7. Control F1. Let's also make Control F3, Control F4, Control F5, and Control F6. Build one more SCV, so we're at 16 supply, and then go barracks, and then gas. Now, that was pretty fast. Don't worry, guys, I'll slow down from here. But I just wanted to show you guys an example of what that looks like once you've got it nicely memorized. And you guys will be a little awkward at it. Just remember, as long as you're doing things in the right order, these more advanced things of like tapping things. If you accidentally queue up two SCVs before starting, that's okay, right? That's that's not the end of the world, right? It's it's important for you to just make sure you're doing things in the right order and trying to get the, the strokes of the build. But I'm trying to just show you some really nice bonus habits just to give you the, the, the extra things. Like, hey, look, we can queue up to go down there, you know, to, to mine five minerals and then build the command center essentially with that SCV. We can already not have extra SCVs. So many people have this, right? And then they go, oh, it's time to build an orbital and they have to cancel those. But instead we're waiting on 19, build the orbital, build the reactor. I forgot to put the barracks on a control group. So control five on the barracks, guys. I also forgot to send the SCV across the map. It's, it's funny, talking about the fundamental habits, I do have a tendency to forget some of the basics a little bit more. That's okay. So guys, build the command center. Shift click back to minerals immediately. Select the command center, center shift seven, upgraded. double tap seven, control F2. So we jump to the main now, we build an SCV, a mule. Need to build that depot and then go back to mining, shift click, lower the depot in the wall and start that marine production. So queue up another two SCVs, another two marines. And it looks like our opponent is following my scouting technique. They have an SCV behind the natural. What did we forget to do? Notice this command center. I control grouped it, but I didn't rally it. Always do both at once. Control group it and then rally it. So here guys, check it. Factory, shift click the SCV back, add the factory to number four and set the rally point. If you can do that all at once, it is so much more effective. So much more effective. This guy, we don't need to shift click because he's going on gas. Build a few more Marines and a few more SCVs here. We always do that every few seconds. And check it out, we see the opponents expanded so we can bring that SCV home. Our SCVs are under fire. We can grab a few What's more workers on? here and put those on gas, guys. We can build a few more Marines. You want a piece of me, boy? And this SCV, rather than building minerals, wait a second, we want to build a starport, right? So go, cue this SCV to already go there. We can now go for an orbital and drop mules. There's an SCV there, so let's kill the SCV. And then we can shift click or shift a move back to the ramp okay let's get the starport and the tech lab and we want to cue the scv back to minerals select the starport shift four set the rally point keep those rally points going guys more scvs more marines so in between the cycles more scvs more marines we can rally those scvs to the natural queue up more scvs now that this orbital's finished more marines and you can really see the build starting to come together. Our money up there in the top right is really low. That's awesome. What else is getting a bit messed up in that top right, though? Uh-oh. <laughs> We're almost supply blocked, aren't we? Gary and Bruce, once again, a little late to work, but better late than never. 
And because we're already almost supply blocked, we might as well tell them to start another two depots immediately, just so we don't forget. Queue up a few more SCVs here, drop some mules, a few more marines as well. Just queuing up extra SCVs and marines. You see how low we're keeping that money? That's a really good indicator that you're getting much better at StarCraft if you're doing that. And obviously, if you're supply blocked all game, our money's going to float. So the depots finish and our money drops again. Let's queue up more depots and then start building them up in our main. You don't want to build the depots haphazardly. Basically, always build your wall with Gary and Bruce and then queue them into the same spot in the main and build the depots in a nice tight grid. Don't be building them like... Because you want them to always be building in a consistent location. It's going to make your life much easier, guys. All right, guys. Queue up a whole lot of SCVs here. A few more Marines, a tank, and a reactor. And our Viking, we can fly that, remember, through the enemy base. Use the minimap. Right click in the main, right click out through the natural. Our tank, right click on the high ground, shift siege. We forgot to build a bunker this game. We're lucky we got away with it, guys. I say lucky, but it's a pretty safe build either way. So it's not like you're always going to die if you don't do that. Now we're floating a lot of minerals, guys. So it is barracks time. Select some SCVs and we go one, two, three, four. Notice how I like to build these buildings in neat rows that our base is organized and not a disgusting poop shoot. We could look at our Viking, but you're just looking to see if there's anything crazy. At this point, we don't really know what we're looking at. Uh, Viking, yeah, he's got Marines and tanks. I've got Marines and tanks. Cool, we're doing the same thing, guys. Now, let's give up a few more SCVs, a few more Marines, tanks, and medevacs. And then what are we gonna do? Engineering bay, and then double gas, okay? Gary and Bruce need to keep building depots as well, so let's keep queuing up extra depots for them. Gary and Bruce, friends forever, gonna slowly explore. A totally platonic friendship. Totally platonic, they say. Both standing side by side, polishing their drills in that goddamn engine lubricant, and just like mm, winking at each other, their shirts are off. Times are sweaty. Things happen. Things happen. You're on altitude, it's a cold planet. It happens. Let's put some guys on gas. Uh, we're going to start plus one weapons there as well. And tech lab, tech lab, reactor, reactor. There we go. More marines, tanks, medevacs. And oh, are you doing the same build as me? I think he's doing the same build as me. Guys, he's mirroring me. <laughs> God damn it. I think he might have already watched last week's trial trial episode of Bronze to GM. And uh, he's already doing the build. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> All right, guys. So remember when your barracks finish, stim, shields. I might as well queue, queue up concussive straight away just so I don't forget. And now that the tech labs are there, when we select our barracks, we always go marauder, marauder, at least a few marauders before building the marines, okay? Then we build the tanks and the medevacs, which I don't have gas for right now, but that's okay because we've started plus one weapons. We've queued up the upgrades. So all the rest of our gas from now just goes towards tanks and medevacs. So we select that key. So select four and then build the siege tanker. Always use these hotkeys, guys. Don't ever click down there. That's going to be the main thing early on. I'm kind of skipping by that a lot in this bronze to GM. Uh, but if you are a brand new player, you might not know all the buttons. So make sure you really... If you can just work on using the hotkeys for every action, doesn't matter if you're winning or losing. You're getting so much better. But if you never make that step, you will be stuck in Silver League pretty much as a hard cap for your skill level. Very hard to get Gold League if you don't use, control, if you don't use hotkeys at all. Um, Alright guys, so what's our work account? 47. So we go, okay, cool. We can still drop a few mules, but other than that, we can save the rest for vision when we move out. Just build marauders, marines. So notice we built like four or five marauders and a Nothing ton of marines. We then build a couple of tanks and then a couple of medevacs. We've only got a few medevacs. You see, I don't have any money. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the medevac key and that's going to keep queuing medevacs Research as the money complete. comes in. Now we've got a few medevacs queued up. Feels a lot better. Upgrade is ready for you. Build some more depots here. And what do we got, guys? Stim's almost finished. You guys know that's go time. So let's grab this big old army of ours. Control 2. Remember, if we got harassed at any point, we would have been pretty slow to respond because we didn't control group the army till now. Let's move about... Whoa! Stim and attack move, guys. Those have to be your reactions. And then control click and siege your siege tanks. He ambushed us, guys. We do a scan. Now, why do I do a scan? Because siege tanks can shoot further than they can see. So scanning makes sure even if your marines and marauders and stuff die up front, you can still shoot at maximum range. Now, this is where a lot of people stare at a fire. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Panic, panic, panic. No, no, no. There's nothing to micro there. 
Look back at home. Marauders, Marauders. Marines. Build a tank or two. And then build some medevacs. We're still waiting for a little bit more money. Just wait for enough to build a second medevac at least. Okay, cool. Grab these guys. Shift two. Let's bring them down here. Now, did he just run away, guys? Coward! He ran away, man. What a absolute coward, man. So let's rally to the natural now with all my production. And uh, make sure there's a ton more marines building, especially. We could also get plus one armor. And I'm just waiting till I have what I would call a decent chunk of units. How do you know when it's time to push again, pig? Well, I just want to have a decent chunk of units. Right now, four tanks is a lot, but it doesn't feel like that much marine marauder. With these guys coming out, that just feels like a decent chunk of marine marauder. And four siege tanks. Let's move. So we're going to move across the map, guys. We'll move to about three quarters of the way across the map to a staging zone. Somewhere not quite in enemy territory. And we can scan. And usually you scan outside the natural. If I didn't see anything there, I might have scanned elsewhere. We're trying to just see where's his army. Because did he just forget to build marines for the last five minutes, guys? I don't know. Anyways, while we're moving across, queue up extra marauders, extra marines, extra tanks. You don't technically need to look at home to do this, guys. You can just do this off your control groups using the wireframe. Building tanks there. And we're going to build some medevacs as well. Let's scan one more time, shall we? Oh, looks like his army's over there, guys. I'm going to go past his army because I don't have any scans left, so I can't see if his army's bigger or smaller than mine. And what we're going to do is we're going to move in here and stim and aim it. And then we're going to control click and siege the tanks, okay? So we're trying to get as much damage. Now, notice our guys aren't defending our tanks, so we should actually aim move back down there to defend our siege tanks. But you don't want to fight away from your tanks. And it looks like he's running away. So we're actually just going to go, okay, well, in that case, I will go and just A move into your main base, okay? So we're going to stim, A move into the back of the main. Make sure you don't A click on a building, because if you do this, this is a big problem a lot of level players do. They go, A click, A click, A click, A click. And what do they do? They end up clicking on a building, and all their units are trying to attack one building. Just click on the ground and occasionally select them and press stim, okay? If your units are stuck on a ramp, you can move in, and then you can aim. Now, it looks like he's trying to base trade, guys. So he's trying to come in here, but it looks like our rally of units defended without me having to do anything. Phew! So the medevacs are going to fly in. We could stim those marines just to kill these medevacs a little bit harder. And uh, GG, well played, mate. And Hoss does go down there in the TVT. So really keep in mind, you will get games where people harass you a little bit more or weird things happen than this, especially if you're starting fresh on ladder because you're going to be playing much higher level people than actual bronze and silver players. Like we're playing actual silver league players for the most part today uh, with one or two that are like low gold basically or almost gold. Um, you guys are going to lose a lot more games, but it doesn't matter. I could honestly be doing the same practice in an empty custom game and I could be learning so much from that, guys. Because as long as we're getting these habits down, we're going to get so much better. Let's get into this game, guys. We're, we're playing Spin Stick uh, TVZ. We're going to be talking a lot more about the macro cycle. Now, the macro cycle isn't going to kick in for a little bit. So we're still just focusing on the build, focusing on continuing those good habits. Control 7, make the camera location, make the camera location, camera location, camera location, uh, camera location, and camera location. We go straight for the barracks and then the gas right afterwards and then queue up some more scvs and remember we're not going to forget the scv this time so we could go for the scv scout hide it behind the natural and there we go now i did that all a little bit quickly i was a little bit behind on things at the start so we'll slow down from here guys so we're going to build remember three scvs we want to be up to 19 supply we're going to put two dudes on gas and let's set the barracks hotkey let's also use that camera location cue that worker to the natural if you just queue it, if you don't bother with the, the extra click for the minerals, don't worry about it, guys. That's just bonus stuff. That's bonus stuff. You really don't need to do that. Um, all right. So what are we waiting for? 19th SCV plus barracks. Look at how well timed they are. That's a clean build. Orbital and reactor at almost the exact same time. How good is that, guys? It's orbital. You know, I already pressed the orbital button, immediately selected the barracks and tapped the reactor button. That's a clean build order that is. And then your SCV is waiting, and you're already pressing the, S the command center key. So the moment you hit 400 minerals, you can build that. Shift click it back, select the command center, shift seven, set the rally point, double tap seven, remake the camera location, jump to the main, make SCVs and mules. I accidentally set the rally point there. That was a mistake. <laughs> Sorry, guys. 
<laughs> but you see that that organization there allows you to get so much done in quick succession. It's game changing. So let's start building marines and SCVs, guys. Queue up two SCVs. We could build like four marines here. There's an overlord having a bit of a perv on our natural. Not a big deal, guys. And remember, our SCV saw a hatchery. So just click it back on, okay? Now what's next? You guys know what's next. It's the factory. And that SCV will build the starport after, so we can already move it there. We can get the second gas. And you guys know what comes down next. Mr. Bunker. Do we want to build it at the front or a bit further back? I think we'll build it at the front this time. It's really up to you, though. Wherever you want to build it is fine. Queue up a few more SCVs, a few more Marines. Lower that depot. I like how I'm aggressively tapping my keyboard way harder than normal. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I'm like, it's, it's almost like I'm like, see, I'm hitting the button. And I'm like, okay, that's that's enough, Big. You really you don't need to <laughs> make the orbital command center. And we're building this way. So let's start talking about the macro cycle. The macro cycle is a rhythm which with which you perform your basic tasks. And we've kind of already been doing it, but not the full macro cycle. We've been kind of doing the, the beginning basic macro cycle, which is queue a few SCVs, queue a few Marines. Queue a few SCVs, queue a few Marines. The full macro cycle is an order with which you do your macro tasks and you always do it in the exact same order. So let's pause here before we get into the point where our production's getting up and let's very quickly tab out to the document and show you guys in the notes what we're talking about just to introduce the concept okay so the macro cycle every 20 and this is the kind of the advanced version of the macro cycle we can do a more basic version where we queue up extra units and don't do it as frequently but essentially it's every 25 seconds no matter what other crazy tasks are going on in the game we do one of these cycles and it keeps the engine rolling most low level players all the way through to mid level are constantly supply blocked not building units, not spending their money, and basically generally shitting the bed in terms of their macro. And they'll come back every two or three minutes and go, ah, oh, and they'll try to do everything at once and it's disorganized chaos. And they take so many actions that are unnecessary and so much time to just get a few basic tasks. So what we do is we memorize a set order of doing it in the same order every single time. And we're not gonna remember to do it every 25 seconds. Sometimes it'll be 30 seconds. Sometimes it'll be 45 seconds, sometimes a full minute. But when we do it, we're gonna do it so quickly because we've practiced it that way so many times. So what we do is we queue SCVs on our command centers, at least, at least two SCVs per command center and drop as many mules as we can with whatever energy we have. We obviously can cut this out once we hit 45 SCVs with this build. We next queue at least a couple of Marines and a Marauder for every barracks, a tank from the factory, and two medevacs on the starport. We then add depots with Gary and Bruce. But if we're maxed out, or if we've lost a big army, we've got lots of supply free, we can skip that step. But by default, we just follow the whole thing without even thinking about it. It's just drop mules, build SCVs, queue army units, bam, 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 build depots. And we do that every 25 seconds. And if we do that, we become a much better StarCraft player. Operation commencing. All right, guys. So let's queue up some SCVs and drop some mules. That's the first part. Second part, build marines, then build tanks and medevacs. But we don't actually have that production yet. So that was it. What did we forget? Depots, guys. Depots, the last step. So let's build those depots as well. Gary and Bruce are going to get to work. And I'm actually going to queue up the other depot there and queue them both up to the high ground after that, just so we're already getting prepared for that next step as well. How good is that? Is up and running. Okay, guys. So next up, what do we do? Another macro cycle. That took us a while. Build a few more SCVs. Rally down here. Build some, drop as many mules as we can, which is just one. Build a few more Marines. And then we're going to go tank. You very, Thank you very much. And then we're going to try and build a Viking. We don't have money for it, so we're just tapping it. There we go. It starts up. Set our rally points there. And how good's that, guys? Okay, I forgot to put Marines in the bunker, so let's, let's do that now. And uh, we can also lower the wall. Fantastic, guys. We're a bit oversaturated in the main base. By the way, it's totally okay for this number to be red. Those extra three workers are still mining reasonably effectively. Not at 100% efficiency, but pretty good. And because we're playing Terran, you always want to have extra workers in that main. Why do we want extra workers? Uh, can anyone guess? So we've got more Marines, more of that. We queue up more depots after the unit production. Always sticking to the same cycle. Notice... Because every time we do SCVs and mules, we follow up by building army units, we make sure we never forget army units. Every time we finish building army units, we build depots. And that is 100% necessary. 
Cue the Viking for Scout. Now, the reason why we want extra SCVs is because you need to build a lot of structures with Terran, and it's very worker intensive to do that. We just pulled four workers off mining for the next 40 seconds, and now we're undersaturated. So this is going to regularly happen where you're just building a lot of buildings, and that is why you want to have a few extra in the main. So it's always good to be 18 or 19 workers in the main. Never a problem. Let's do another macro cycle. So whenever you finish building some buildings, scouting, doing other things on the map, first thing you do, guys, that's a hive. <laughs> this guy's rushing ultralisks. I'm so dead. This is going to be great. <laughs> ignore ignore it. Focus on, what, focus on your build. Don't get distracted by the opponent. Number one problem we'll have is, is getting distracted. Queue up four SCVs. Drop some mules. Drop some marines. I build some marines, sorry. Build a tank. Build two medevacs. And build two depots. That's a macro cycle. So what do we do in between the macro cycles, guys? Select the barracks, shift five. Two tech labs, two reactors. We build an engineering bay. We take the two gases on the natural. And you know what, guys? We're already at 48 workers, so we don't need any more. Let's just put workers on gas straight away. So build SCVs, drop mules. Wait, we don't need SCVs. So let's just drop mules. Let's build marauders, build marines, build tank, build medevacs. Now, at this point... I see my tech lab's done, so I want to go start stim. No! Don't do this! How that is... We didn't finish our macro cycle. So if we if we get distracted and start making upgrades now and think about that, we forget depots, we hit a supply block. That is why we stick to the macro cycle. If you, as you're doing the macro cycle, certain things you need to do occur to you, put it on your shopping list. Mentally, put it on your shopping list. You say, we'll get to that in a moment. So, okay, we've done the macro cycle. Now I can go stim, shields... Cool, let's do another macro cycle from the start. Mules, as many as we can. Marauders, Marines, Tank, and Medivacs. We're a bit low on gas, guys, so we just get a tank. We can't afford Medivacs right now. What's next? What's depots. On? Every single time, guys. Every single time, we've got to get those depots going. And now we're in between macro cycles, so we can go, oh, okay, what's next? Um, let's get plus one. I've got all my production I need. I've got a pretty big army. Let's control group that. Control group two. We can unload the bunker. Shift two. More. And uh, time for another macro cycle. Mules. Marines and marauders. Lots of marines and marauders. Build a tank. Build more medevacs if we can. We can just wait for the gas. Or we can do that in a moment. We get the gas. So Gary and Bruce. Queue some more depots. While we're queuing the depots, we got some more gas. So we can finally queue up some medevacs. So you can see, guys, the macro cycle here is a game changer because you guys suck at all these basic tasks. If you're watching this video, you're relatively shit. You're like, ah, oh, let's click a command center and click down it. No! Nice organized macro cycle, guys. Drop mules. And let's stop dropping mules after this one because we need vision when we move out. More marauders, more marines, more tanks, and more medevacs. And you'll find that Mineral you will get defeated. so much better, so much quicker by doing this. And this kind of ties into what we'll be talking about in a few games time as well. Which is, you want to develop skills to be deep muscle memory in StarCraft. You want things to happen without you having to think about them happening. Oi! Research complete. What the hell? Get out of here. Bad Zerg. Whoa! There's an Ultralisk in me base, guys. No, and he's doing it again. So we're just stimming our whole army and attack moving, guys. Now, if they ever go for something like this, what you want to do is you want to build Vikings out of your starport, guys. So we're going to build a couple of Vikings. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab these guys to go down here and defend there. Actually, you know what? We, we still want to go for our big attack. So let's try to move out. But what we're going to do is we're just going to build a lot of Marines and Marauders. These guys here. And if they don't have vision, they can't put up a Nidus Worm. So by pushing these Overlords back, we'll stim after that. We're going to limit his ability to build Nidus Worms here. We're going to shift to... We're going to A-move our whole army about three quarters of the way across the map, okay? Now, if he Nidus Worms again, and we're kind of watching for it... By the way, why is he green on the minimap? Press that button, guys. You want your opponent to be red. Green's really hard to see. So you see, he's thinking about coming back in to do a Nidus Worm. So we can take these Vikings, and they can go kill that Overseer, wherever he is. He's somewhere around here. We can shift A-move all around our base. Oh, there we go. We got him. And that there is a big scary army, guys, of Lingvane Ultra. He's coming over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and siege up our army. Okay, we're going to siege it up there. And we're going to try and 
spread the units out a little bit. These guys are going to run forward. And when his army's here, guys, we're going to try and run these guys back behind our siege tanks and then A move them, okay? So there we go. You see he's coming for us. And then we can A move them. But looks like he's running away. So let's try and run forward and see if we can bait him in again. Yes, sir. We don't want to go too far from our siege tanks, guys. You gonna give me orders? And we just want to stim our army when the fight happens. Now, this is where spreading your army is basically non-negotiable, guys. So let's spread the army out a little bit. The way you do this is you just box some units and then you click them. Box some units and then you click them, okay? And you just want to basically set these guys up all around. And then when the fight happens, you select them and press stim. Now, there's nothing else you can micro here. Anything you click on is going to make your units perform much worse, okay? But if you win the fight, we can A move. Now, why do we know there's a base here? Remember the trick we talked about earlier? We saw the drones going that way. So we're going to stim and A move that base. What are we going to do? Go home. Build more marauders, build more marines, build tanks, build medevacs. We can get plus one armor. Gary and Bruce can build some more depots. We can box these guys. Shift two. And we can finish killing these spine crawlers. Not the most important thing. But there we go. We can get back up here. Now, our opponent appears to not have any other bases. We got a Viking there. Let's just check this corner here and then here. We can try to kind of scan. It looks like they spent all their money on that hive rush. I don't think they had a very good economy, guys. So we're going to unseize the tanks and move forward. But we haven't done a macro cycle in a while. So more marauders, more marines, more tanks, and more medevacs. Now, guys, how many medevacs do we have? We're going to have a lot. So after those medevacs, we probably don't want any more. Shift 2, and let's move forward. So I think we should be able to just A move them, guys. Always scan ahead of your army. Try to see where your opponent's army is at. I don't know where it is. I think it's somewhere out on the map, so we might get flanked. But maybe we can kill all of his base before then. So we'll just A move into the main base. And uh, there's queens on my side of the map for some reason, so that's a thing. Let's stim one more time, make sure our units keep moving in. I'm still confused about where my opponent's army is, but notice how your guys will just stop and attack really pointless things like lava and buildings. Our base Always good to move up into their base, guys. So let's stim one more time, move up, and let's really A move on top of their stuff. Now, ah, okay, guys, so we see what's happened here. So run the SCVs away, should always attack. be your first instinct when a mineral line's under attack. And then we can try to just siege the tanks. There's another tank there, siege it. And we can just kind of hold that position with whatever Nothing we can here. Now we could monster. stim it forward and attack him, but there's no need to do that. We're just going to let these units clump up and defend themselves. Okay, guys? Our base is under attack. Now, does he have the bottom left? Upgrade complete. Oh, okay. I must have killed the Nidus worm at home, guys. I think we've got this. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these guys. We're going to A move there. We're going to press stim. Looks Our like this is all he attack. has left as far as I can tell. I don't think there's any other bases anywhere else. <laughs> Hats off to Spinstick, though, for bringing out the memes. The Ultra Nidus Worm. What a legend. GG, well played. What a sicker. How do you make workers auto attack? You have to attack move with them, Cedric Steven. So that's what you do whenever you want your units to fight, is you attack and then left click on the ground. So A, left click on the ground is the default. Yeah. All right, guys, we've got ourselves a TVP here, a rematch here against Jutal Zero from one of our earlier games. I think it was the one who ruined my mineral line with oracles. I guess there was a few Protoss who did that, didn't they? <laughs> now, obviously, there's a small adjustment we could make in general in this matchup. If that keeps happening, guys, uh, if we're playing a Protoss player, we can just leave a few Marines in our main mineral line and we'll be safe naturally against that. So totally fine to do that. Set the rally point back there, guys, and let's get these camera locations going one two three four you can go five one two three four five and then the rally point no worries we could build the barracks there control group it take the gas and start queuing up a few more scvs is ghost usage recommended for metal leagues <laughs> definitely not Ghosts are quite hard to use. Um, in general, spellcasts, I mean, if you really enjoy them, you could use them at any league you want. But uh, 
There's definitely no... Uh, you can go GM without ever using a ghost, basically. Spellcasters in general are a little tough to micro because Terran has so many activatable abilities, even Bio have Stim. You really don't want to be using ghosts until you've got uh, quite a good handle on army management. Um, and they're just very, very much uh, not necessary. There's other tools you can use. Anyway, guys, Reactor plus Orbital Command Center comes in. And we're looking okay. Opponent's going for a Nexus, guys. So we can already just look at the minimap. You see a big dot on the minimap? You know that's a Nexus? Pull it home. And it looks like this guy accidentally let return his minerals. So that command center is a little late, but not the end of the world. Shift click back to minerals. Shift add to the command center hotkey. Set the rally point. Double tap center the camera location. Command center. Jump back to the main. Build an SCV. Drop a mule. And then you build that depot. Cue it back to minerals. Start complete. building more marines and more SCVs. So notice we only have like one SCV queued in these early stages at a time. So I can afford the other things like at this point. But now that I've got the barracks down and stuff, I'm like, okay, we can queue two or three SCVs and a few more marines at a time. Technically, if I don't have as many queued, I could actually afford my factory a few seconds faster. But it's all about, it, it's not worth SCVs missing a whole bunch of fire. SCV production. So... It's just one of those things where you want to play to your own skill level. If you think you can pull it off, go for it. And if it's too much for you, just pull a few extra SCVs. Just queue, have a few extra SCVs queued and you'll be fine. All right, guys, so we've got a bunker on the natural going up. More Marines, more SCVs. Remember, this SCV is going to build the starport after that factory, guys. Factory is on four, barracks is on five. This is great. How do you stop a Reaper Rush Harassment Scout? Uh, well, you can just put... If you're in a TVT, you can just leave two Marines up there on the edge. But otherwise, you just aim move your Marines after it. Unless someone has really fantastic micro, they're not really going to kill anything. And uh, if they're staring at it, they're not going to be macroing very well either. Pull two SCVs onto gas. Get a mules dropping, more SCVs, more Marines. And... What do we do, guys? We're starting to do macro cycles. Remember, once our natural's up, it's macro cycle time. I just queued SCVs, mules, and then marines. We need to start going depots. This structure is going to make sure we stop getting supply blocked. And this is actually where speed comes in in StarCraft. A lot of people feel like, oh, I can never play that fast. The reason you can't play that fast is you don't know what you're doing. Once you have your actions memorized and it becomes muscle memory, you don't have to think about what you're doing. Your hands just do the work for you. So anyone who's ever played an instrument or gotten really good at cooking or something, you find yourself cooking gotcha. your favorite dish, doing it without even thinking about it. And it's the same in StarCraft. We want a lot of these actions to be like tying your shoelaces. You just do it. You don't have to consciously think about, do I got to do that over that and then do this thing? And No, you just, your hands just do it. It's all about repetitions and muscle memory. So I hope this really helps you out, guys. And um, I hope this, this kind of, mindset can change the way you play just remember it takes a little bit more time than you maybe expect but if you give it that time you will get so much better guys all right guys so where is the uh gary gary and bruce there keep the depots going beautiful a viking can fly through the enemy base get a nice scout more scvs no mule energy build some marines build a tank so what's up next guys looks like we have an idle scv there from the star fort by the way no worries Oh, there's a few stalkers outside our base. No worries. So I'll raise those depots for now. We've got a tank and a bunker behind the wall, so we might lose a depot or two, but that's okay. And it's past time, guys, where we build those barracks, right? So let's go. We're going to build two barracks there. Oh, you know what? I was doing that the advanced way. Let's do that the new way I've been showing you. Hold down shift. Barracks, barracks. Barracks, barracks. Right click, right click. So you can see he's being annoying. So we can just move this over. Just a little bit closer to the wall and siege it up there, okay? We just did a bunch of things that aren't a macro cycle. So that means automatically we should know in our head, got to do a macro cycle. So we're going to build a bunch of SCVs, drop some mules, drop, build some marines, build a tank, build two medevacs, build two depots. And if you feel, oh, let's just queue up more depots straight away, go for it. Nothing wrong with that, guys. You can always queue those out of time. We can just queue extra ones on the next cycle. Control click the barracks, shift five, set the barracks hotkey, set the factory or the, the rally point, barracks rally, factory rally. And guess what? 
It's tempting for me there to go build marines, but we don't build things out of cycle. SCVs, mules, and then we go for the marines, the tank, and the two medevacs. And once we've done all that, that's when we do the other tasks, which means add-ons. But we don't have gas right now, so let's get the gases, get the engineering bay. We can put guys on gas straight away. It looks like we have more than enough workers. And check it out, guys. Yeah, we're, we're going past 50 workers, so we have way too many workers. That's fine. Let's build two tech labs and then two reactors. Oh my, look at that, guys. So let's box my army here and A move that. Now, if we can siege tanks as well. Looks like my tanks are going in the wrong direction. We can try to siege tanks here and just kind of leave our units spread across the bases right now. Add on is shift up and two. No worries. All right, let's go back. Macro cycle, drop mules, uh, build marauders, build marines. Oh, this barracks never built the reactor, guys. Or the reactor. And then we build the depots. Oh, wait, we didn't build tanks. Oh, no, I'm going out of cycle. I'm getting distracted. Build the units. I could have built the add-on later. Build the tank, build the medevacs, then build the depots. Bad period. That guy's blocked, so I need to lower the depots just by control clicking and lowering those. And what have we forgotten? Well, it's not that we forgot it, we didn't have the gas. So stim and combat shields. So we should have been taking those gases a little bit earlier. You can see that's really hurting me. I'm gonna queue up a lot of marines for now, not really build many marauders yet to help make up for that. And remember, it's totally okay for your starport to not be producing medevacs early. It's actually more important for you to get tank production, stim, combat shields, upgrades, all that stuff going. Speaking of upgrades, plus one. That's going to be more important than medevac production because you don't need that many medevacs and your reactor's up very early because this is kind of a beginner build order where we're not really optimizing things. Anyway, guys, okay, more marauders, more marines, a tank, more medevacs, which we don't have energy for. We'll build a few more of these depots. And now we can just kind of unsiege these tanks since it seems he stopped attacking me. Stim and shields are both getting about halfway done. So it's not time to move out just yet, but soon. Unload that. Shift click. Lower the depots. So we've got shift two. And once a few more units come out, I think we're going to be good to push, guys. So a few more marauders here. A few more tanks. Medevacs. A few more depots. Just following that macro cycle. See how smooth that's making everything? We're going to box these units. Stim's almost done now, so I think it's time to move out. So let's move across this map to a staging point. I can even fly this Viking in ahead just to kind of see what's going on. And oh, look at that, guys. So what you want to do, if there's a prison, move past it and then A move. And oh my god, that's a big army, guys. Let's siege our tanks here. Control click, siege the tanks. And try to pull your bio back. Don't chase into Colossus. So Colossus do really good splash damage versus bio. So this is a very good army at holding us back from pushing. But this doesn't actually stop our army in a pitched fight. If our tanks are sieged, we crush this army. So we're going to unsiege and we're going to move forward. So we're A moving forward, scanning. And then we're going to have to siege the tanks and pull the bio back. This is getting really hard. So let's take a moment. It's been a long time since we did a macro cycle. More marauders, more marines, more marauders. A few more tanks and... If we have enough of medevacs, we can build vikings. Let's grab these guys, shift two. And I think we have enough. So you can actually build vikings because they counter colossus, which is awesome. Now we're going to stim and attack move with our army as he attacks into us. We're also going to drop a scan just to make sure we have full vision on these siege tanks, even if all the bio dies. If we were super pro, our tanks would have focused the colossus there. Let's stim one more time. See if we can kill the colossus. Now, if you actually target them individually, that will kill them very quickly, guys. So notice I am clicking on one, clicking on two, and then clicking on three. But it looks like he has enough to defend us. Okay? So he pushes me back, and we're going to go home one more time. So we're going to run my army home, build more marauders, build more marines, build more tanks and medevacs. I accidentally unsieged those, by the way. I was trying to boost the medevacs. But I figured since they were unsieged, we should just go home. Box these guys, shift two. And that looks like a pretty decent army. So we're going to move forward on the same path one more time. Now, if we were actually a smart player, we could go around the right of the map and his army's out here trying to ambush me and then I arrive at his base sieged up and win the game. Look at that, guys. He's coming forward with a pretty good army. So let's siege the tanks here. And... Oh, he's right there. I thought he was going to be on the top. Oh, his army's behind me. Look at that. So we're going to scan. Always drop a scan when you're using siege tanks in a battle just so you can see everything. Other than that, all we did was stim and aim move. Cool army movement by Jutral there. Really cool play by him. 
But we held position, so what do we do? Jump home, build marauders, build marines, build tanks, build medevacs or vikings, either one. Box the army, shift two, reinforce the front. And when that army joins here, we're going to go for one big killing push. I'm very lucky this Vikings being able to see so much. I just kind of noticed that it was left over from earlier. But it reminds us just how good it can be to split off Marines and just dump them. See, I'm using Spacebar, dumping these Marines on zero. And just to get a bit of vision ahead. And isn't that nice? So this is something we'll do a lot more when we're higher level rather than scanning nonstop. We'll actually use our army to scout. More Marauders and Marines. More tanks and more medevacs. And since we've queued up extra units, we did a macro cycle. We're okay to focus on the micro. So let's stim, amu, control click the tanks and siege them up. Big disruptor shot just walloped my army. But we had so much more stuff that it doesn't matter. And it looks like we can stim in for the win. So we're going to unsiege the tanks, guys. We'll just tell them to run forward, amu with the rest of our army. And that's awesome. So our units are doing what they need to. Let's go home. Build Marauders, build Marines, build Tanks, build Medivacs. Box these guys, shift two, and we're going to A-move them to the front. That army also just got boom-boomed by a big disruptor shot. <laughs> Whoops, I accidentally just stimmed my whole army across. It is what it is. So let's siege these tanks up since we don't have many units left here, guys. And we'll stim the bio across the map. We've got a lot of bios sprinting across to try to join in here. And it looks like they are finally arriving. Hopefully, we just have the numbers to win. GG, well played. Very well played. Is it bad? that bad if I mouse click for producing units? It's terrible, 404 Joker not found. Yeah, you got to use the keyboard. And it's, uh, it's really, really bad. You should never, ever be clicking on anything down here. All of these, everything over on this side of me, should all be, be using the... Uh, the... Um, the the, the hotkeys basically if you don't do that you'll get stuck very badly with just not being able to do things quickly it just makes things way easier if you do that ggs all right guys command center is gonna rally there we're gonna build two scvs okay guys so last couple of games to wrap up bronze to gm uh part one bronze and i really just want to hit home uh, towards the end of this just that idea of everything we're doing here is going to take you a lot more repetitions than I've showed you I'm showing you a few examples of talking through the build talking through these base habits um, Talking about the macro cycle It's going to take you a lot more practice to start to put these pieces together So be patient with yourself just focus on one thing at a time and remember <clears throat> that when you're first learning things Starcraft is very difficult But if you play the game correctly, these skills will start to settle They'll start to settle in and it'll be like a, a riverbed that's been all kicked up and the water's all murky and it's all chaos and you can't see anything but once you practice it a little bit it's like all of that silt is going to settle down into the bottom of the riverbed and everything's going to be crystal clear and starcraft becomes much easier in that point because all you're doing is recalling things from memory and you're doing all these little set pieces that go together now, don't get me wrong. You're playing a multiplayer game. The opponent's always going to do something new that you're not going to know how to deal with. But really, if you have the learning mindset, <clears throat> each time you encounter that, you just kind of go, oh, cool. I had no idea what to do here. Let's analyze it. Look at the replay and go, okay, what do I do next time? Write down a few notes on like what you should do or take a few mental notes. Oh, okay, I got to remember to do this and this. And then you kind of go, okay, cool. Next time I'll get a chance to practice that. Maybe even hop in a custom game and practice it yourself. But uh, at this stage, it's probably not even as so much about how you're reacting to the opponent. I would focus a lot more on just all these habits I've already talked to you. Don't don't get distracted by a battle cruiser that flies into your base. You die to a battle cruiser, just host up the game, play another one, and just keep trying to improve your build order. Remember that you have so much room to improve in this build order and these habits that you really don't need to um, you really don't need to to do anything too too crazy. So anyway, SCV is hiding behind the natural. Let's start building marines, more SCVs. Let's get a factory now. <clears throat> we can get that factory on control four. We can also build a gas there. And oh, we forgot to look at our scout. His buildings aren't in his base, guys. So what you want to do in this scenario is A-move your SCVs. And we're going to actually rally the marines onto one of the reapers so they immediately target it rather than move commanding. Now it's running away. We need to pull back. Now, he's gone Proxy Reaper, guys. So these guys are all going to be on different control cut groups. 
But we're really noobs, so we're just going to use... No, 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 yeah. So army on control two. There we go. These guys also shift two. Now those SCVs aren't helping fighting. Unless I A move them, guys. So let's try to send most of them back to mining. Bring the marines back. Stay on the ledge. And let's keep macroing, okay? Build mules. Don't build SCVs because we've got very limited money. Pull off gas onto the minerals is also something you can do here. We can build marines and hellions because we just need anything to survive right now. And if he comes up, we need to box and A move to make sure the SCVs are actually fighting, okay, guys? Because if the SCVs aren't fighting, we're in big trouble. Now, we can make another orbital command center on the natural, but most importantly, we just need fighting units. Marines, Hellions, Marines, Hellions, Marines, Hellions. He's scanning again. Let's box everything here. These guys are all on this army key, including the four SCVs that are all fighting units right now. We want to A move towards the Reapers, okay? <clears throat> no fancy micro required, guys. Just A move towards the Reapers. Keep building Marines and Hellions. Center has been upgraded. Now, your Hellion is faster than them, so if you want, you can try to chase, but that's very dangerous. So let's pull back. And now, SCVs and Mules. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I build SCVs first? Because we're getting che cheesed. We really messed up by not looking at our scout, which is why this has been so hard. But as long as we keep building Marines and Hellions, we should be okay. So we're making more Hellions, more Marines, constantly shift to, shift to, whenever these guys come out. And we're almost supply blocked, guys. So let's build a depot over here to see if he tries to jump up again. And let's keep building SCVs here. Try to drop mules. We don't have anything for that. Build more Marines and build more Hellions. Now we've actually got a big army, so maybe we feel safe and we can go for a siege tank at this point. The reason we built Hellions is because they build very quickly. They're just going to help us fight, especially against light units like Reapers. We can now get the starport up. And if you ever survive a cheese like this, it's really important to just go back to your normal situation. Now we can see he's still building units on the front. Has he expanded? He has not. So what we're going to do here is we're going to build a bunker in the main and the natural. We're going to build a tank, more Marines. And then we're going to build SCVs and mules. So very advanced adjustment, guys. We build units first and then work as second. Now he's coming up into my main. So let's box, shift two, and let's A move. And looks like he moved right up in front of me. Big mistake for him. And it looks like we're going to be able to hold this just by building lots of army and attack moving. More marines, more tank. We'll build a medevac. And then we go SCVs and mules, okay? But we are supply blocked right now, aren't we? So, let's try and build some depots. Gary and Bruce here. I don't think a wall off's very important in TVT, guys. So Gary and Bruce are going to start building. And because we're already supply blocked, we're going to queue them to build more depots. I don't have enough money, so we're just waiting till I have the money. And then we can build that. Now, his barracks is still in vision, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put a siege tank up here. And that's going to cover both sides, both the natural and the main. You can see the dotted white line when he sieges. He covers part of the natural and the whole ledge. And I think this allows me to grab everything else. Shh, can, we're going to shift box, control two. And because we killed so many Reapers, these guys should be able to attack, move the barracks, and then go across the map potentially for a counter attack while the siege tank and our new units coming out defense. So more Marines, more tanks, more medevacs, then more SCVs and mules. We can go take a look at our army. How do we do that? Guys, F1, double tap two. If you press two twice on your keyboard, it jumps to your army. F1. Double tap two. F1, double tap two. Get used to that to track your army. And look at this. We can actually kill his barracks on the way home. So we're just going to A move these guys up north, kill his barracks, and go home and continue the build. Now, after a chaotic early game, you've got to take stock. Where are we in the build, guys? We're building a lot of SCVs, which is good. Gary and Bruce are still building depots. But what else do we do? Four barracks, right? That's next. So we've got to go four barracks. One, two, three, four. Shift click back to minerals. We're also then going to build an engineering bay and those two gases. And then it's a macro cycle. And because we're not in danger of dying anymore, back to the standard macro cycle. SCV, SCV, SCV. Mule, mule, mule. Marines, tank. And we're going to build a reactor on the starport as well. These guys can go shift two. And we can kind of bring those guys back. I don't want to attack with them because it feels like they've wasted a lot of time. He could have tanks or something out by now. We don't really know. 
Because we killed his proxy and all of his reapers, we can bring this guy to the front. And we could probably go kill him now, but why do that when instead we can fix our build? Control click the barracks, shift five. Put guys on gas. Build the upgrade. More SCVs, more mules. Our main base is super oversaturated, so we can grab a few of these workers, send them to the natural. That's going to balance things out. Build a few more marines, a tank, medevacs, and then back to the build. No, no, no. Gary and Bruce didn't get an order, guys. You've got to keep Gary and Bruce. That's the end of the macro cycle. Then we can go do other things. Tech lab, tech lab, reactor, reactor. Beautiful. All right. Now the macro cycle, build SCVs, build mules, build marines, build tank, build medevacs, queue up more depots, and then we can do other things. So when these tech labs are done, guys, we're going to go stim and shields, get concussive after that as well, and we can start massing these other units as well. We could also set the rally point to the natural for everything, box and shift to that army. So we just always box shift to, just getting used to that. Very important. More marauders as well as marines here. Add on complete. Tanks and medevacs, and we'll queue up more depots. We don't have any money, guys. But you can see we're at 51 SCVs, so we don't need any more SCVs in this game. And with Stim and Shields about halfway done. Well, not quite. They're only about a third done. So we'll move out in about 30 or 40 seconds, okay? About the 10 minute marker. How many army groups are we going to be using, guys? Just the one. Obviously, like I said, if you want, we can put the tanks on a separate control group. I'll do that this game just to show you guys the different option. So we've got all the tanks just following that Marauder, okay? More Marauders, more Marines, tanks, medevacs, and a lot more depots. Let's queue one more after that as well. And I think we can move out, guys. It's almost 10 minutes. So we're going to move across the map to a staging zone outside our opponent's base. Accidentally got an SCV in the army. Now, if you accidentally have an SCV in the army, guys, just press spacebar, dump that off our control group, send it home. We're done with no worries. Mineral field depleted. And as we're moving across, you can both watch your army and select your barracks, build a few marauders, build a few marines, build a few tanks, and build a few medevacs. And you can do both at once, okay? We've completely so our army is not quite there, but almost. And he's got tanks on the high ground, so he's we setting up in a very turtly position. That's okay, because we have a much bigger army. We don't really see much army. Oh, he's got quite a few tanks I didn't see there. So we're going to just move in, siege the tanks, and then we're going to stim and attack move. A lot of our army's actually stuck behind each other up there. So if I move forward a little bit, that would have been nice. But notice I'm pulling away, because remember, we saw he's got tanks on the high ground. And we don't want to just be A, moving into them, because this tank here, this tank here are very hard to get. We could kill that tank easily from the low ground, but the other tanks, not so much. GG, well played. All right, guys, so that game there, I don't think was too hard to hold. And this is why I tell people reactor first is one of the safest builds because at low level, it defends most cheese. However, this would have been much easier if I paid attention to my scouting because guys, what are we meant to look for in our scouting? And this is all in the document. This is all in the document. People always ask me, what do I do if their buildings aren't in their base, pig? I'm doing your bronze to GM. What do I do? What do I do if if they're on one base? Are there buildings in their base? If not, they're proxying us, and we will respond with bunkers on the high ground and a full wall, and then resume the build with the command center on the high ground. If they have the fastest possible spawning pool, finishes about one minute. then you can do the same response. That's a little bit more advanced, that scouting for Zerg, but I guess I should just write it in here. So, when we scout this, bunker on the high ground, wall off, and then build the command center on the high ground. So, at this point, guys, rather than building my command center, I should bring the SCV back, build a bunker here, build a depot, and then go for the command center up here and continue my build as normal. Command center, factory, second gas, starport, all the standard stuff. Now, a bonus point would be, wait a second, if it's TVT, should we maybe put that bunker up here? And the answer is yes. If you guys are seeing a lot of Proxy Reaper, you're worried about this build, it's the most common way they do it in TVT, build a bunker at the ramp, but build another bunker near the ledge. Now, you're going to notice there's a ledge there. There's a little ledge where the Reapers can jump in, 
They can also jump up this ledge here on the natural and this ledge down here. So they have quite a few access points, but if they want to go to this side, they've got to rally all the way around. It's much more awkward. So it's easier to manually defend this. So if you just have a bunker at the ramp and then a bunker at the ledge, you should be completely fine. The other thing we want to do is, like I said, just pull our CVs to fight. Now, you can make that a lot easier for yourself. I was kind of debating with myself whether or not I should be doing it. Um, but you need to bring SCVs to fight, right? So you need to grab a bunch of SCVs, put them on a secondary army group, so you can attack, move them, and pull them back independently from your Marines. If they're on the same army key as your Marines, things get very awkward. Now you might be like, well, Pig, you only defended this because you're a pro gamer. But, hold on a second. I want to show you guys something. The barracks is meant to finish at a minute 28, which it did. That was a well-timed barracks, but... My reactor took a second to go down. That's a one second delay. Might not sound like a lot for a pro it is. Not only that, the reactor upgraded. then finishes at two minutes and five and seconds. When do I start building Marines, guys? Over 10 seconds later at two minutes 16. 11 second delay, which means I'm almost two like a marines only take 18 seconds to build so these two marines are 11 seconds late getting the, the third and fourth marine 11 seconds late that is massive because i'm just kind of slowly explaining the details of the build and talking about concepts i'm not playing anywhere near perfect but neither is my opponent because we're playing at a low skill level so you can get away with some pretty big mistakes people say oh you need to play near perfectly with this build to defend or this or that not at all the scv scout if i'd reacted with the bunker up here, this is the easiest hold of all time. Even as it is, I don't think I showed any sort of advanced control here. Maybe one or two tiny maneuvers I did. But basically, as long as you just keep building Marines, try to build some aliens if you can as well, and have the SCVs ready. So if he jumps up again, you A-move those SCVs, which, by the way, I didn't even do here. I didn't even A-move those SCVs because I was trying to react very slowly. And that would be awesome. Uh, what should the opponent have done to get the Proxy Reaper successful? They should have sent uh, an SCV across at the very start of the game. And uh, they should have gone 14 or probably 15. Stop at 15 supply, go 15 barracks, 15 gas, 15 second barracks. Then build an extra SCV or two. Um, and that way they could, if they build everything right on time, they don't miss any production time. They can just get the Reapers out earlier. And they can jump straight in the base with a single Reaper while rallying the other Reapers to that Reaper and then just keep building them. Get a bit of damage done from the very start and go from there. Um, technically, if they don't know I'm going reactor first, so they should SCV scout to see the reactor first and that should prompt them to go in. If they uh, see that it's a Reaper producing for me or the barracks is just producing like normal, they then they can wait for two Reapers before they jump in. But if it's reactor first, you want to go in straight away. All right, guys, final game of Bronze to GM Bronze League. We're playing a TVT, and we're going to try and wrap in everything together for this game. So, tight build order, good habits, uh, you know, building that muscle memory of that macro cycle together, and just trying to make this all click automatically. So, rally back to the minerals, build another SCV here. We want to go straight up to 16 supply, remember. So, there we go. And this SCV is going to build the barracks. We then build a gas right behind it. And let's get those camera locations going. Second base, third base, fourth base, fifth base. And uh, we've already got the rally point set up. Beautiful. We can send an SCV scout across the map, guys, and queue that behind the natural all off our control groups. We can also go control two. So we can easily bring that scout home without having to look across the map at all. We can just monitor it on the minimap if we feel like keeping an eye on it, okay? Let's queue up another SCV to 19 supply. And let's lower that depot. We can also set the barracks rally point. And we can just kind of F1, F2, F6, F1, F2, F6. Get used to just looking between those. And then, of course, barracks finishes. We make the orbital and the reactor right afterwards. All right, guys, this is a pretty clean opening. Now, obviously we could take this base or this middle base is probably a better fifth base, to be fair. This guy, we forgot to queue back to the minerals again. So let's build that command center and then queue back to the minerals. A little late on that. Shift seven, double tap, make the camera location and set the rally point. 
jump back to the main, build an SCV, drop a mule. Just one SCV at this point, because remember you're very starved for money at this stage of the game, guys. And it looks like our SCV got trapped in the base. So he's just gonna, I don't know, hide in a corner for now. Alright, let's build another SCV, start pumping marines. So four marines, two SCVs queued up, no worries. And hopefully that SCV can scout Great later job, on. Huh? We'll just hide there inside the main. Let's get the factory going. And we're queued to build the starport. We want to select the factory. Shift 4. Take a second gas. And more marines and SCVs. So this is almost like a mini macro cycle. Even at 2 minutes 30, it's build a marine, build, a two, you build an SCV or two, build a few marines, right? Awesome. Put on gas nice and early so we don't forget, guys. Build another SCV, another few marines. And remember, as soon as this command center is finished, we want to go straight for an orbital command center. So if we've already put on gas, we've got the factory, we've got SCVs and marines queued like we do, we can just immediately start that. And you see how much cleaner the build is when we're doing that ahead of time. Beautiful. So a few more SCVs, another mule, a few more marines. Next up's going to be the starport, guys. But look at this. We don't have money. And that's a good thing, guys. If you don't have money... That means you're doing the task yep. the second you're able to do the I'm task. Going. It means you're so much more efficient. We can get a tech lab, shift four on that, and we can set our command center rally points command to our natural. Now that the natural's finished, first macro cycle, two SCVs on each command center, a few marines, and then a tank and a medevac. And then what happens after the tank and the medevac, guys? <gasps> Depots! Depots! Gary! Bruce, get to work! Gary! Yeah, Gary! We need more depots, man. Why is logistics always letting us down? Now, if we want... At 3 minutes 30, you meant to scout to see if they're one base or not, guys. So we're going to try to get to that expansion. We can't get down there. Looks like uh, he's got a lot of barracks already pumping. Three barracks. I don't know if he's expanded or not, so we're just going to drop a scan. And it looks like it is an expansion, but with a lot more production than me. I forgot to build my bunker this game, so let's do that one. And uh, let's keep on producing. SCVs, Marines, Tank... And then uh, we didn't build the Viking yet. We don't need to. Now, normally the SCV would have seen if there was an expansion or not, but we just used a scan because our SCV got trapped. So we don't really need to bother with the Viking. We know what's happening in this game, guys. We can move these guys to the low ground. And notice we can right click there and then just tab to the siege tank and shift siege. And it'll siege in a pretty good spot. Let's keep Gary and Bruce building before bringing them back up into our main base to build depots there. We also want to lower the wall just to make sure they're not stuck. And do another macro cycle. So we're going to build four SCVs, drop mules, build more marines, build a tank, build medevacs. We can also just add these guys down here to our army. Shift two, shift two. Put the marines in the bunker and siege that tank as well. No worries. Awesome, guys. So what are we missing so far? Well, we need to build more depots. That's Gary and Bruce there. So we want to make sure they're already queued to build more. And we need those extra barracks, right? It's okay to not build medevacs. Remember, if we build medevacs now, that's ahead of time. We only really want to start the medevac production once we do that. I'm oh, sorry, guys. I meant to do it for the new boy. There we go. So we get four barracks, and then we go for the engineering bay and the double gas. And it's time for another macro cycle. A few more SCVs. We don't need many more. We're already at 45. Drop mules. Build marines. Tank. Or tank. And then medevacs. So we're going to build two medevacs for now. And then we build the depots with Gary and Bruce. I just ate eight bananas. Did you actually eat eight bananas? God, someone was studying Lambo from Home Story Cop. Talking about how he had to eat eight bananas. Because he didn't have time or uh, space to eat a full meal during uh, Sweden. The Mad Dog. Why would you eat eight bananas? That's crazy. Way too much fruit, man. I'd feel sick after that. Anyways, plus one weapons is on the way. Uh, <laughs> I do love bananas. I had banana banana in my oats with peanut butter for breakfast. It was really good. Two tech labs, two reactors, guys. Uh, fantastic. How good's that? Okay. So, macro cycle. Mules. Marines and marauders. Tank. Metavacs. Depots. Let's kill a whole bunch of those depots. Add on complete. All right, guys. So notice we've got a bit more gas coming in. We really want to start stim and shield. We don't have the gas for it just yet, so we're just going to do a few more marines while we're waiting. We start stim. We start shields. Awesome. All right, we're looking pretty good so far, guys. 
add-on is I think this is looking re pretty solid. Now, bonus bonus step, let's send a few marines out on the map. Just a few kind of pep it across the map, try and get some... Whoa! All right, game sense. Now, he could pick up and drop in my main, guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab some of these units, just move into the main base so that they're ready there. More marauders, marines, tanks, and medevacs, as well as more depots. And uh, that was a pretty big bio army, which is not particularly surprising. He is in the main base, so let's siege those tankies. Let's bring all of our units here. Shift two. And we can A move all these guys. Box shift two. A move into the main. And a good defense there. A tank in the bunker on the natural will defend us as well. Poof. So the, the opponent's mistake here is that they're doing my old bronze to GM and they're trying to force their way in. We're both doing two base timing attacks. So uh, the, the, the correct play for them is to just kind of chill and wait for me to move out so they can get a good fight. But they're probably just kind of following the early parts of the build order where it says just commit to the attack, see if you can break him. But uh, if they uh, noticed that I was there, they, they could have just chilled, kept massing up and waited for me to move on the map because that's what we're doing, right? Stim's almost done. We're still building... Uh, we don't really need depots because we lost some army there. Well, got a lot. We're going to move across the map. Three quarters of the way across to a staging zone. More marauders, more marines. Plus one armor. We can also... I guess we'll build two more depots just because why not? And just lots of marines and marauders as well as tanks behind this. I think I've got plenty of medevacs. Eh, four, it's okay. And we're just going to try and scan ahead, see where his setup is. And he's back in the natural now. But he has a third base out there. So the third base should be easy pickings. We're just going to stim and A move that. We're going to do another scan ahead to see where he is. So we'll kill the third base to start. Try to get those SCVs. And now, how do we push in there, guys? Well... He is a really technical maneuver. So let me show you guys. If their tanks are spread like this, it looks very menacing. This is a bit high for this level. Basically, you grab your tanks, you control click them, and you just basically Nothing move them in range. And it shoots you twice, but then you one shot it. And that's what happens if you have a lot of tanks and they've only got one tank ever covering one area. And after that, you can basically keep doing that over and over again. Or if you feel your numbers are high enough, you can stim and A move. Now you can see that tank there isn't getting attacked, so let's stim, move up to it, and then A move is the way to do that one, guys. And then you want to try to move up the ramp and kill everything else. He actually macroed really well and had a much bigger bio army than me. If he didn't throw away a bunch of bio at the front, took a third base, waited for me to move on the map, I do think potentially could have taken me down. Really well played by my opponent, guys. GG's. All right, guys, I really hope this show has helped you out. I think I've done a much better job than in any of my previous Bronze to Jams of slowing down and really breaking down all the concepts we've talked about. To think about it in terms of general uh, concepts, it's all written out in the in the documents, right? It is all written out in those documents. And uh, he actually had a pretty damn good production. So this is really well done by him. Nice play by Mook. Playing my old Bronze to Jam. So make sure you follow along the notes at the same time, guys. If you take a look here, what did we focus on today? First of all, we focused on the basic build order. Then we talked about fundamental habits, queuing units back to mining. Uh, what, what, what were they? Constant SCV production, building depots, queuing SCVs back to mining after building structures, mo building multiple structures at once, always adding our army to our control groups and our buildings to our control groups using control click or boxing the army, setting up those camera locations and using those as well. So those were some really nice fundamental habits we focused on. After that, we talked about the macro cycle for a few games. And then we had a few games talking about the macro cycle, as well as just generally how our goal is to practice these things until they happen automatically. So I really think the macro cycle, especially to hit home on that, there's this idea that you will get distracted and thrown off and make mistakes in StarCraft. But anytime you deal with a big attack and it comes in and there's craziness and distraction and your attention is drawn somewhere, you focus on that tell you don't need to here you see i'm watching this fight for instance right i'm watching i'm watching I clean it up i go okay cool it's all good just organizing my army i'm like i think we're good but then there's an attack on the natural as well so i check there and i go no that's all good and what do we do 
we should be going SCVs. So I started depots first, and then I unseized my... Pig? Pig? I guess because I'm already at max SCVs, aren't I? Okay, 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 there we go. I should have immediately been doing a macro cycle. That, you, you see, even I, doing my little talk about macro cycle, got distracted in this game, guys. And that's why you should look at your replays and do the same thing. The first thing I should have been doing is dropping mules, building marines, marauders, or marauders and marines, building tanks, building medevacs. That the moment I, I felt, I didn't need my attention here. And if you build that system for yourself, it's going to be much easier. Because I'm a much higher level player, I don't really follow the macro cycle as strictly anymore, but there are still moments in the game where I do go back to it and follow it religiously. And it's very important whenever you get too chaotic in your play, disorganized, even grandmasters and pro players need to go back to their basics sometimes. But for you as a player who's developing the sacred macro cycle, anytime you fight, you do, you do an attack, you defend an attack, queue up as many units as you can, you know, go through SCVs, mules, build army, build depots. If you follow that in the same order over and over again, you will absolutely kick ass. Pig, please tell noobs to not get sad if they get whomped on ladder. There are an insane number of smurfs in gold. Keep playing your level up. <laughs> yeah, it's not even that many smurfs. Just people making new accounts uh, sometimes getting ranked. And it's also just, you know, you get crazy different results in your matches as well. But uh, it's also when you start an account, you are playing people in the middle of the ladder. And that's why we were talking a lot earlier about how people should not be upset if they lose their first games you're not meant to win your first games i lost a lot of my games today but i actually think they were all really worthwhile because we were really showing you guys the skills at a good pace and slowly developing i really hope today's show has helped you all out uh next week in silver we're going to be kind of ev evolving same build order but we're going to be talking a lot more about how to set up these tank pushes properly we're going to start leapfrogging our siege tanks a little bit spreading our units a little bit as well as adding a few other concepts in, like analyzing our replays Nothing to make sure we're actually cluster. learning what we talked about today properly. Because it's not going to happen overnight. I know a lot of players who get to Platinum League and still don't follow the macro cycle. But maybe they got good at just the basic opening build order. Um, but their macro sucks the moment things kind of fall apart. So there's still a lot of development you need to do as players. And it's going to take you a lot more time than shown here. I know these skills like the back of my hand. I can show you in a game or two and instantly, bam, I'm blitzing away and smashing. You guys will take more games. So be patient with yourself. Remember, you're not going to learn as fast. I've been at this for so many years, and I hope this really helped you out, guys. Welcome to StarCraft. Welcome back to StarCraft returning players, and uh, good luck. Have fun on the ladder, everybody. GG's.